Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Scoreboard Keepers. I am your host, The Ref. We have a great topic on the board today, and we'll see you right back in 30 seconds. Keepers. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, you guys are going to like this topic today. It's touchy for some, and for some, they uh, they don't mind talking about this. They don't mind discussing it, especially uh, the Second Amendment right uh, supporters. Um, this is pro-gun versus anti-gun, and we're going to score this as honest as possible, uh, according to what all the 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 debaters have to say, you know, that's discussing their cause. We're gonna de- we're gonna score it as close as possible, um, and listen to what both sides had to say, and see what they bring to the table, and see if it makes sense. If it makes sense, you know, around here we add it to the board, and if it don't, we won't. Let's get started. This is gonna be fun, guys. Things evolve, right? And guns are gonna evolve. And if I have the ability to be able to shoot something that is as powerful as a grenade, are you gonna be like, that's your right, because if someone can have it, I should too. It's the second or someone amendment. can, and that's the problem. There has to be some restriction. Unless you all believe that we should all be able to have nukes at our homes, grenades at our homes, grenade launchers we have, at our homes. We should be able to have equal whatever the government has. Oh, really? Welcome back to Middle Ground. My name's John. I'm the host of the Radical Empathy Podcast, and I'll be moderating today's discussion Our topic is pro-gun versus anti-gun. And our first prompt is, I fired a gun. If that's true for you, please step forward. All right, let's go. Here we go. So my family um, does hunt. That's a part of our culture. And um, when I was younger, my dad, um, I've gone with him. I've never killed an animal, um, but I have gone with him for like tracking purposes or, um, you know, being outside, connecting with nature. And um, he did teach me how when I was younger. So it's not something I've done regularly, but I have done it. Same here. Um, I've got like family friends that are very into guns. And one summer they wanted me to have the experience of like shooting a gun. So I tried it. I didn't love it, but you know, try everything once, I guess. <laughs> Why didn't you love it? Um, I just didn't like the feeling. It was really heavy. I was very young and I don't know. It just wasn't for me, I guess. I spent a lot of time in the Middle East growing up. So when we were in the Middle East, we would hunt, use guns in general. And when I would come to America, uh, my family has had guns. I even have guns. And so I've shot multiple times. Well, I've shot a gun. I loved it. And my whole family loves guns. So I think that's kind of how the culture was instilled on me. Yeah. Well, my whole life is guns. I own over three, 400 guns, you know what I mean? So I shoot them all the time, every day. And I'm also a United States Marine Corps war veteran. I've been to war. So I shot a lot of guns in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, I grew up around guns. My um, father was military and police. My older brother was mm. military and police. My little brother is military. And I was taught to fire weapons at a very early age because my father believed that if you remove the curiosity from a child about the gun and they're uncomfortable with it, they won't be interested. So he was right. It created gun safety in our home. I did not like firing a gun when I was young. And I fire guns now regularly as an adult. It is about the gun and how it feels and how it shoots That's and cool. how you operate it. So, That's crazy. I do that yeah. with my kids. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't even mess with them. Yep. You know so it takes away I all the curiosity. All over the house. Yeah. They don't want it. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you if you listen to everybody's testimony right from the beginning of these debaters, you notice that it sounds like it's all passed down from family members. So it's not something that they're just picking up in the street, unlike Rambo, <coughs> who was in the military. But everybody else seems to have picked up um, these guns from other family members. It wasn't something that they learned outside the house. So we're finding out right from the beginning that these things are passed down. It seems like tradition. Let's go. 
Yeah. I was the same. I grew up in Alabama, but my family didn't hunt, weren't military. My dad's a pastor, but they just believed in them for self-defense. And so they were always around the house. We were also instructed very young with firearm safety. And then uh, if my brothers especially wanted to shoot growing up, then my dad would take them and practice with them. I mostly didn't want to because I also have never loved the feeling of shooting a gun. Even now, I have a gun. I'm, I'm a registered like uh, concealed carry permit owner, but I don't love the feeling, to be honest. And you're right, it differs based on the gun. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a hobbyist. Like I think it still revolves around the element of self-defense for me. So it's something I think you need to take responsibility for. Would anybody want to kind of elaborate just on like the feeling of firing a gun, whether it's positive or negative, um, just as more of an experience? It depends on the gun, but like, you know, a lot of them kick too. really heavily. Like even I have a revolver that I got that's meant for women. It's about this big and it's great to carry because it's small, it's easy, it's light, but shooting it sucks. It really hurts. Like some of the larger guns, like I've shot an AR-15, it's mm -hmm. like butter. It doesn't hurt at all to shoot it. So it definitely mm -hmm. depends on which instrument you're using. I, de I think the person mm -hmm. too. I got post-traumatic stress, but they told me I got it different. I get a rush. So now when I shoot a gun, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I relieve all the stress, everything. What? You got post-traumatic what? You, you know we have to hear what he has to say, right? I mean, we're getting testimony right now. You got post-traumatic syndrome, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and you're getting a rush from these guns? Um, mm, let's go. I mean, I'm having a great time, you know what I'm saying? I'm, so it's all on the person and the gun and everything, you know? We're going to bring in our disagreeer. All right, here we go. Why you never shot um, a gun? So growing up, my family, we, we didn't really have a lot of guns around the house. Um, and my cousins or my you know, relatives didn't really have guns or it wasn't like an outing. I, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't, it wasn't an outing. Yeah. And um, I found a pellet gun. That's the only thing that my father had growing up was a pellet gun that he hid in his closet away. And it was one day where me and my sister were playing around and um, I found it and I actually, you know, pointed it towards my sister. Mm, didn't know so it was a very traumatic experience for myself, right? Mm -hmm, and yeah, for my family to the point where when that was brought up, it was more so like somebody said education on how guns are not as helpful around communities of color. If well, there's well, not well, a right well, education. Where did you grow up? Because I, I grew up I in New York. I New Orleans, Louisiana. I grew up in New York, um, Brooklyn, Is it New York. dangerous? Yes. So, a, so you don't think you need something to protect yourself? Well, not particularly in Brooklyn, New York, um, because they were already um, a mass surveillance of police who had guns. Yeah, but, right? but, but, but police, you got to call police. It takes time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. They will have a prompt dedicated all right, all right. to yeah. this. Gotcha. Perfect. <laughs> it was never a curiosity for me because of that traumatic experience that I, that I had with my, my sibling and, and not really having guns around. So. I just never had that inkling in my life yeah, to even try to go to a range or even when friends would suggest it, I would be like, oh, okay, good for you, you yeah. know, but it's I don't really it. have that it's interest. Understand. It's understandable. Did yeah. you, do you mind if I ask, did you actually sh accidentally shoot your sister as well? Or did you just play? No, okay. um, it was just, you know, you know, watching film and yeah. playing, yeah, I you got know, you. Bad right, bad guy, you yeah. know, bad guy or good guy. You could have made a big mistake. And it was a pellet gun and my mom was like, if you don't, if you point that again and... Your mom knew mm -hmm. that you weren't supposed to point it. Right. If they would have taught you earlier, right. you would have known that. Right, but I think they didn't teach me because we didn't have guns around. None Even of my family BB had gun. guns around. Even the BB guns. Like, they should have showed was, you. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a thing. thing. It just to, wasn't a thing to, to, to have Your dad just family. had it. He exactly. in the closet. He might have shot it two or three times. Exactly. And my you. parents grew up and they didn't really go to the range or I none of you. their friends even spoke about it. I'm listening to that Rambo, ladies and gentlemen. The reason I paused it. He's pushing the issue of being trained to shoot the gun. And he's he's acting like it's a, a necessary thing to have. It's it's not. He's explaining to you that there were police around. It just wasn't a thing in his family. But Rambo is assuming that everywhere everybody lives that there's there's danger it's, it anything can happen anywhere it doesn't mean you need to be walking around with something with deadly force 
you don't have to be walking around with a gun to feel protected. I know a lot of guys that all they need is their hands. How about that? Why, why hasn't that come up yet? All they need is their hands. Because if you can't get to your gun, most likely you're probably going to get knocked out. Let's go. About it as well. Well, and you can't negate the fact that, like, access wise, illegally in New York, I mean, how much access do you guys even have? Like, right. only celebrities and, like, very important people can even obtain the right to self defense in New York. So, yeah, like, yeah, you know, I think yeah. that's a problem, too, because it's like, how much education did your parents get? Like, how much access did they have? And if they did right. want to teach them, like, where's their range? You can't yeah. go to a range in New York. Like, right. you know, they really do strip people in whole geographic areas of being able to access what we got in the South, yeah. you know? They do. All right, we're going to reset. Next prompt. This is a good point. I'd let my children be around guns. Will the agreeers please step forward? Oh, this should be fun. <laughs> well, I currently have three children, ages 10, 7, and 4. I mean, I carry regularly, so they know that the gun is on my person. They never are curious about it. They never really want to touch it because they know what I've taught them, right? And that's what it comes down to is I've taught them, you can touch this, you can look at it. It's not that exciting. In fact, it's actually quite scary. If you were to use this wrong, you would kill somebody. And that's terrifying to children, right? So they have Patriot learned, Barbie. well, you know how to operate it. So you've got it and you've got us and you're keeping us safe. There's no need for me to, to need to touch that or look at it or play with it. I've I mean, always felt like that too, you know what I mean? Good like, point. if you don't show the kids when they're young, like, if you say, hey, here's my gun, come on, come on outside, you wanna see what the gun do? Come on, put your earmuffs on, let's go, put your glasses on. Pow! The kids, oh, I don't wanna touch that, I don't want nothing to do with that, daddy. <laughs> hey, let me, let me leave that alone, you know, and they learn. But why do you have to traumatize your kid to show them that it's not <clears throat> something to play around with? It's on television all the time. You don't have to you don't have to take your kid out back and blow his eardrums out in order to, to discipline him or to give him an understanding that these guns are not to be played with. Because the first thing he's going to be thinking is, why do you have it? Why do you have it? Kids want to be like their parents. They want to emulate somebody. So if you have guns, they're going to want to have guns. And it doesn't mean that everybody's going to use them correctly, whether it's your family or not. You have to show them, you know what I'm saying? You have to... Lead by example. Basically, you know what I'm saying? Hey, if I'm shooting, See? I need to teach my son and my kids at an early age so I can know they won't have no problems later on down in life. If you tell a child, don't touch my gun. So a gun means that they're, they're, um, they're not going to have any more problems down in life? As if they stopped making guns when they gave them to you and your kids, right? No. They're going to run into problems. And especially, especially if they have guns. Whether it be from regular citizens or the police, for that matter. I mean, that's not, he's making it sound like that guns are the, the end of all answers. Just because you got a gun, that doesn't stop you from having problems. And you won't always be there to protect them. gun the yeah. thing that they want to do most touch is touch the gun. your gun like anyone that has kids knows if you tell them not to do something that's all they want to do rambo you said you had 300 guns yeah i got about 300 guns yeah and my kids are on them all the time all day i got them all around my bed you don't worry them. about them well first of all first of all i don't leave them loaded to operate a gun you can't just grab it and squeeze it you know what i mean you gotta cog it back take it off of safety you might have to take it out the holster you know what i mean i have one gun that I keep on me for stuff like that. But the rest of them, they're in safes and maybe a shotgun here. Maybe I might have a gun under the table somewhere, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in a magnet. I'm I got a couple guns house. all over, you know, I got at a any couple of them. you have a gun pointed yeah, at you, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> they're all over the house, you know what I mean? I can't lie, you know? But I'm from Louisiana, man. It's a, it's a, it's a cultural it's a thing. culture. Like, like, I grew up, my yeah. father had like 30 shotguns in his closet. It's a, it's a cultural thing. It's the sportsman's paradise in Louisiana. No, it's not. 30 guns? That's culture? 
Listen, your father was probably a hunter. Men of that of that uh, era had guns because they were trying to put food on the table. They weren't out there hunting other men. You got guns all over the house. So that tell me you didn't understand his mission. You got guns all over the house and you didn't tell you ain't said nothing about you taking your son out back and showing him how to skin a deer, how to gut a deer. You talking about he won't have no problems later down in life. You haven't said anything about him going out here and putting food on a table where we're going into these crazy times and 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 food is at an all time high and the lone shoremen are on strike. Like, no. I'm not a Rambo. Why, why, why is your name Rambo? Like, like what, what is that about? You want to come here and have all these guns around regular citizens when they got a war going on somewhere. If you, if you like having that many guns and doing all that, you wouldn't be coming here. You remind me of the type of guy that you just want to be around regular people that don't have weapons while you got 40 of them displaying all types of power. That's what that's what is oozing out of you. I don't like that. That's oozing out of you right now. If you want 30 or 40 guns, guess what? The Ukraine can use you right now. They can use your help. But you want to be here amongst us regular citizens that just want to live peacefully walking around here shooting off guns with guns all around the house. Nah, I ain't falling for that. You you haven't scored a point yet. That's all we do, hunt, fish, shoot. Mm -hmm. If I had children, I would teach them in a proper way. I think it's harder specifically because I was born and raised in California. Is it hard in California? Absolutely. Especially because the right to bear and conceal arms is definitely harder to obtain. There are many cases where California just constantly wants to instill laws to hinder people's freedom to exercise the Second Amendment. And so in terms of the school systems and public school systems, I would not trust my children to be trained with a gun. I think that's something for the parents and that's something that should be instilled by the parents from the young age like, like we've discussed because children need to understand that the right to protect, protect themselves is a freedom and is within our amendment right. And when you are constantly seeing, for example, even in the media where guns should be feared for, it kind of creates a controversial statement for our simple fundamental amendment rights. My son's been having a loaded gun in his room <coughs> since he was 10 years old. And I, his you room said loaded? Loaded. Wow. Not, well, not one in the chamber, but in the magazine. Wow. He knows how to operate wow. it and everything. He has a bulletproof wow. vest, he has a gun, he has everything. He, now he has way more. I can't, I'm, a, I'm a Marine Corps war veteran. I've seen death. People could get crazy and I just had to teach my son like, hey, he might have to save me. You can't wait on the po See? See? You brung the war back home. You brung the war back home. That's what it sounds like to me. I'm not even sure you knew what you were fighting for either. But you brung the war back home. And that he may have to save you. Like you're creating all these scenarios. You're creating all these scenarios that very rarely happens. It's a possibility anything can happen. But if you need a gun all around your house and you're you're that paranoid, you might need to move. You may need to you may not be I, I mean you maybe you don't need to be around people. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe you should maybe you should move from wherever it is that has you has that much of a threat of your safety that you need to keep 300 guns around. That's insane. Instead of you getting up and moving, you'd rather add to, or to the art artillery. I disagree with him in many ways. Police, man, you can call them, but 
it might be too late. So I don't have kids and I don't plan to have kids, but if I did, like mm -hmm. I would absolutely want them trained, particularly young girls. I think it's really, really important for females to learn to exercise the second amendment and to protect themselves. Like if you want to talk about feminism, that is the only thing that actually makes you equal to a man as a woman. Like that is to me just, it's a crime to not teach girls how to defend themselves. Yep. I want to add one caveat though, which is I do have another family member. I won't. I Defending yourself. Uh, you ever heard of karate? Jiu-jitsu? MMA? Boxing? Pepper spray? De defending yourself? Defending yourself is not always deadly force. That's a death sentence you get, you're, you're putting on somebody. That ain't defending yourself. You can defend yourself in many ways. I'm confused. I'm confused. Identify, but who had some significant issues in adolescence and was having a lot of violence issues and I was having some run-ins with the police. In those kinds of situations, you also have a responsibility as a parent, as a family member, to keep dangerous guns away from kids who yeah. are showing those kinds of signs. And that's on you as a parent in the home. You know if your kid's yeah. not right. You know, you know, right. and you have a duty to ensure that they are no longer accessing those and that you're notifying law enforcement, you're notifying the school. And I do think that like, I don't want to just carte blanche say like all kids are fine around guns. Not all kids are fine no. around guns, so. That's great. We're gonna pull in our disagreeers. So I would say, you know, just this last year, it was reported that among child-related deaths in America, gun violence was one of the main factors. That's alarming, right? Even before I knew that statistic, if I ever have kids and I, I am planning on having kids, I would not allow my children to be around firearms. Where did you get your statistics from? Because sometimes I look on the internet, it say one thing, then it say another thing. Right. And so you might be looking at something that might not even be right. But right. it is accurate. Well, it's accurate. I, just don't, I don't well, know. No, 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 it is accurate. But it's it accurate because death in children is exceedingly rare. There's very few things that yeah. kill them, period. And when you look at the number of things that could kill them, yes, that outranks like drowning or being run over by your parent's car. But that statistic and many like it get thrown around to say like, this is a huge problem that's happening all the time. That's not the reality. It's just that it's a low. I feel like even though if it's like a low probability, we should do what we can to stop it, right? Like, it is still the truth that that is exactly, the number one like, killer of children. I mean, is, 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 so is, is there a guns. number of children that you would care about? Is it suicide killing? Well, so, right. I, so I worked I as a mental health. Yeah, so I worked as a mental health therapist and I specifically worked with a lot of kids too. But yeah, I mean, right now we have 50,000 suicides a year. Of that, 29,000 are from guns. Yeah. Uh, of those, 90% are successful when people do attempt. But when they do attempt with other different things, so say cutting your wrist, it's at 6.2%. Uh, if we look at things like drug overdoses, it's at like 10, 12%. It's because you have the ability to call the police. You have the ability for someone to find you. And so when it comes to things like having guns around children, dominate. you're putting it at a high rate of all of those different things. the same things. is true having a pool at your house or having a car that you're driving. So I could ask you the same thing. Like, what number so before do we, we ban these other... Yeah, yeah, I mean, do we have rules on driving? We do have How rules. Many we rules have a lot have? of rules on guns. And, a whole lot of rules on so guns. So you don't, sure, think, sure, you but, don't but, think, but, but, think but, the parents should teach them? But, uh, no, no, no. So here, here's uh, a, a great way to put it. Do you want your kids around drugs doing drugs? No. But do you want to educate them on them? Yes. So there's a difference between, like, I want my kids around it versus I'm going to educate them. Of course. I'm going to educate my kids on guns. The same way I'm going to educate them around a lot of things that I don't want them to do, but that's what we have to do. There is over 300 million guns in America, so I'm going to have to teach my kid that. And the other thing is, too, is there has to be a, a, a line drawn for everyone. Forget everything, throw everything out the door. Is there a number that would draw you to say, you know, I want heavy restrictions? I've had a debate with thousands of people over this, and they'll say, like, no, I don't care. It's a, it's a, it's amendment right, uh, which it's an amendment. We literally added it, uh, and we changed the amendments, and we have many times. So to me, I throw that all out the window and just say, what is that number? What does that look like I to you? I think for me, the number would have to be that you could prove that there are more lives being lost to gun violence than saved. Oh, that's that's easy. That's already it's happening not, right now. It's Wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute, and Hannah, wait a minute. Statistics show it. I mean, you're, you're talking about proof, Hannah, like you actually need to be right there to see the blood. I mean, you haven't saw the news with these AR-15s going to schools? Like, when, when did they start doing that? When did kids start taking AR-15 rifles and doing mass shootings at schools? When did that start happening? 
that should be enough proof right there to show you about restrictions needed. But you're not concerned about that because you've already mentioned that you're, you're never going to have kids. But guess what? If you did, see, this is the selfishness that comes out of some people. This is the selfishness. See, she mentioned, y'all got to catch on this. The scoreboard keepers, we listen. She said that she has no intentions on having children. So, Hannah, that's speaking right now. He said she had no intentions on having kids. But guess what? If she had a couple of little boys and a couple of little girls running around in those schools and these kids running in there with these AR-15s, she would be the first person in line. Mark my word. But she ain't worried about that because she don't plan on sending her kids out there. She, she don't have to even worry about that. Yeah. No way. And all right. So last year, yeah. about 18,000 people were killed with a gun. Yeah. They estimate 162,000 people saved their own lives in interactions where they were. Wait, wait, you said how many people died with a gun last year? Around 18,000. There's 29,000 so. just in suicides and guns last year. You're completely I wrong. I said gun homicides. 18,000 okay, yeah. or so gun homicides. And we're going to separate this out. Why? Because suicides are a whole different matter and require different solutions. But we're going to talk about no, homicides no, no, no. where that... you have no control in the situation. Yeah, 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 Around 18,000 people were murdered last year with. Why does it matter? If it was homicide or suicide, <laughs> the, the same culprit was there, a gun. So why are you separating the two? Because you're trying to, you're not getting no points here. You may be trying to make a point there. This is why we're here, because you, we listen very closely and intently to what people say. First of all, it doesn't matter whether it's homicide. It doesn't matter whether it's, it's intimidation. It doesn't matter if the if it fell off of the, the, the shelf and went off and hit somebody in the leg. It doesn't matter if it was a mistaken identity. There's always one culprit there. There's all the suspect is always there, the gun. So it doesn't matter. So even if you bring up these numbers, you're trying to separate the two when when the same tool was used in all of them. Yeah, we're watching you, Hannah. Guns. Yeah. 162,000 are the rough estimates for how many people saved their lives last year with a gun. And, and so when you could, your lives. they were in interactions where the statistics show they would have definitely or certainly lost their lives had they not had a gun to protect themselves. So they were in high. So now this hypothetical. So now you're using hypotheticals. Nothing, nothing happened, but yet you're adding the numbers there. What, what would have, could have probable. Just because that culprit was there. No, you're not getting any points here. Mistake situations where had they not had a gun to protect themselves, it is almost certain they would have been murdered. How, the question, did they have to like shoot the gun in order to save themselves? Yeah, that's just, statistic, like, not always. I've studied not that always. statistic in depth. And right. what well, you didn't seem to know it. No, but no, no, they don't always have to have shot the gun. It is whether or not they had a gun. Sometimes they had to shoot it. Sometimes they did not. But still, the statistics about how many people are saving their lives every year dwarf but, but, the but, number but, but of hold, gun hold, violence hold. homicides. There's a problem with the statistic. I'll, I'll make it quick. Which is, there's no way to say for certain you would have died if you didn't have a gun. Let's say I go in to rob someone with a gun, and then they had a gun and I left. That is not a statistic to say you would have died if you didn't have a gun. Right. And, and that's what that study actually shows. That's not what it showed. It shows they were in interactions where somebody had a gun to their head. They were in a high stake situation. And had they not had a had gun to that defend themselves, would have for sure pulled they the most trigger. certainly would have. Uh, how, how would you know that? The likelihood is very high no, that no, they would have. How would you know that? And again, no, what number is fine for you to say you don't have the right to defend yourself in that situation? I would say the Because I would say I would much rather err on the side of being able to defend yourself. And that's a low right. ball statistic. Yeah. It's really around 500,000 to over a million, they estimate, maybe have interactions where they save their life, but they can't measure that because it's harder to measure things that don't happen. I had a question for the parents. So you said you're a parent and you're a parent. Mm -hmm. um, my question would be like, if your child started showing like mental health warning signs, like maybe they're like showing signs of early serial killer traits or they're being really depressed. What do you think that letting them experience a gun and firing a gun and knowing how to use it, how do you, th how do you think about that? Like, yeah, I, I think that that is, um, it's like non-negotiable. First of all, when I say they have access, they don't have access. All of our guns are in safes, right? So they can't access them anyway. But I'm telling you right now that if any of my children showed 
any mental distress, emotional distress, or had to be on medications, they would have no access to my weapons whatsoever. And I think that that is a huge issue. And when you say, here's this huge statistic of how children have died with guns, the issue is going to, every time, go back to mental health, not the gun. Because if a child has a mental health issue, they will find a way to hurt someone or hurt themselves. It sounds like mm -hmm. you're pretty vigilant. I'm very vigilant, and I, and I do think that we have some issues with parents not taking authority in their home and, and not being able to recognize your child has an issue. If your child has an issue, you are vigilant in your home to make sure that those guns are secure and safe. If my husband went off the rocker, I'd take his guns from him. There was a comment made earlier, I think by what Hannah, great. that if there is an issue with your kid, if something's going on, you know. And I just don't agree with right, that. Right, I right. don't I think that's that true. You, you, really you do don't. not always know. And I do think it's better to err on the side of safety. And like Dom was saying earlier, death by suicide with a gun is, is much higher. And you don't always know what's going on with your kids. And as much as you want to, and you want to say like, where is the parent? You don't know what that parent is going through. You don't know their situation. Maybe Good point, Sarah. they, you know, have an inkling or maybe they don't, you know, just giving that access to the kid and having it available puts them mm -hmm. at a much higher risk. Right, and I wanted so, to say even oh, with- Oh, sorry, I gotta go put, you're expecting? I am, yeah. yeah. Is oh, this wow. your first you, you better hope so. Congratulations. Thank, thank you, this is my first child. Um, I am expecting a girl, and I don't think that I'm going to build her feminism off of whether or not she can have a gun. I want her to be able to protect herself, stand up for herself, and be comfortable in who she is without a gun. So uh, uh, if she's... Sarah, you just got a point for that, Sarah. I mean, I couldn't have explained, or I couldn't have, I mean, I couldn't explain that better. But what I was doing was I was watching Hannah's face while Sarah was speaking. Hannah is in the white shirt, third in from the right, sitting next to Black Rambo. And she's the one that mentioned that she didn't want to have children. So she couldn't possibly understand. Couldn't possibly understand. And I think she's kind of upset that her, her mom didn't show her. So Hannah may have been going through something when she was growing up also some type of bullying, something to where she feels though she has to really protect herself now. And she don't want a man to do it. And being as though that she don't want to have children, it already sounds like she's taking that uh, option away from a, a possible partner. And that's something. Did y'all catch that? If she don't plan on having children, then d marriage can't be in the cards for her. Because somebody's going to want to have children. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Scoreboard keepers did. Very strong and, and very well trained and she's a confident young lady and she's a feminist and she has a 300 pound man with a gun pointed at her. What do you think is- Why does this man have a gun? Well, yeah, yeah, okay. No, so to, 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 there's men with guns But, but to, to clarify, well, I think, and this goes back to her statistic, which is, hey, it's, it saves people because there's a gun pointed to their head. But that's why we're having the discussion of right. banning those yeah, guns. Right. And if you say, oh if you say- so bad guys aren't ever gonna get guns? Well, the, you're, bad you're, guys are so you think the bad guys are gonna be like, yeah, I don't want We gotta reset, we have to reset. Gun violence is destroying black communities. Will the agreeers oh. please step forward? Whoa. You know, all the gun-related deaths in America, black children are suffering the most from gun-related deaths. Um, since 2006, it has been increasing. That Either from themselves or the police. Black children are the victims of gun-related deaths in America. And out of 14% of black people in America, black people make up 83 percent of gun related deaths in America. So and why do you think that's true? I know it's true because I've seen it growing up in different neighborhoods, whether it be in Southern California or whether it be in um, New York. I, I, I've, I've seen it by police related deaths in America and even being perceived with a water gun. Um, black children are murdered. For example, um, in the 1960s, we've seen um, the Black Panther Party in America who started to legally, by the way, have a right to carry and, and protect their co communities. But it wasn't until a black resistance group that Ronald Reagan at the time, who was the governor of California, enacted the Mofer Act, which then restricted 
most of Californians from having guns. But the whole time, we had white Americans carrying in California. We had white Americans carrying everywhere else. But it wasn't until a black resistance group, I want you guys to understand that. It wasn't until a black resistance group, Black Panther parties came out and started to protect their communities that America said, oh, we have to have more strict gun laws. All right, uh, um, and this continues to repeat, right? So I think we're continuing to see the same pattern of you know, uh, some states and some governments um, have more strict gun laws when it comes to black Americans than white Americans, for sure. When it comes down cool. to specifically like inner city gun violence and things like that, this is, there's a long history of obviously racism, redlining and things that lead up to it. So it's a longer discussion, but frankly, what people need to understand is the contextual understanding of when you grow up in an area where everyone has guns, your mindset and what they all talk about, and they are right, uh, is to equal the playing field. I should have a gun. That's going to make me feel a little bit safer. And frankly, I get that. It's like having mutual destruction with nukes. Countries do that. But we also try and de-escalate by getting rid of our nukes and, and reducing our stockpile because we all know ultimately it isn't safe that everyone has these things. And so, but that's why, and I think everyone on this side believes that like if we can push towards, like they have in many different countries and it has worked if you push towards reducing those guns then those people see less need to have those guns a lot of people say and like they're gonna say is oh well you know the bad guys are gonna get their hands on guns every year 300,000 guns are stolen from law-abiding citizens who don't know how to properly lock up their guns and the problem with a debate like this is we're speaking to people who are very good gun owners very educated uh, you know you're talking to basically the street racing drivers and saying like hey I can go 110 on the freeway trust me if you just know how to like, I get it you probably could and you might not get in an accident Accident, but that's not everyone. I definitely agree. I think that the issue of gun violence is not just about guns. I mm -hmm. think it's a systemic issue and I think black communities in particular have been intentionally divested and mm -hmm. oppressed um, by our government and I think that guns fill the gaps where resources are not mm -hmm. and just taking away guns isn't going to like change that you know there's there's so many other roots to this issue that need to be addressed over policing also mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. black communities are over policed more than any other community and gun violence also happens mm -hmm. at the hands of police yep. who are supposed to be protecting and then of course yeah it makes sense that you would want to have a gun to feel like you can protect yourself against this, but this is all a product of a broken system that has been broken for many years. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is there's a belief that black communities have a high presence of firearms for various reasons. Yeah, it's called it's called animes, uh, A N A M I E S, which basically the ideation that like your morals shift based on the environment you're in. So I, I did a study specifically on Egypt and how they had their uprising and how people were starting to sell drugs on the street and why did they do that? Well, that was the only way to feed their children. And so people wow. don't wake up and go like, I want to be a drug dealer. It's like, hey, back in the time where you couldn't even get a job based on your skin color, what you had to do to survive was a lot different than everyone else. And so when when you get into things that are illegal because that is literally all you can do you then have right. to uh, basically have a gun you know you have to change the way that you view the world because that's the world that you're given so you're like hey I'm in selling drug business and to compete I need a gun to be safe I'm gonna get robbed and it creates this environment now when we shift forward where everything's quote unquote equal it's like why are you guys still having guns well that's what we grew up around that's what we knew mm -hmm. that's what we know and it's a, a, a long point. systemic issue that is very hard to fix but it, it and let me tell you something else, guys. There was an article that came out, uh, I think it was like two years ago, about um, there were trailers left around the streets of Chicago, where we all know is gang infested. And on the back of these trailers was supposedly weapons, guns. Um, they never, it never really made the news much. But, you know, there was the, th that was the word on the streets is that there were trailer full of guns being left around Chicago. Arming these guys. Now, if you notice, right, if some of these kids. Think about this for a second. Some of these kids with these guns have guns that they could have paid their rent with. Think about that for a second. How can these kids afford those guns? They're not going and just buying these guns. Some of these guns cost like <laughs> a, a two weeks of, of worth of a, of a paycheck. So just think about this. These kids can't pay rent, but yet they got a brand new gun that could pay their rent 
for the month. I bet you nobody ever thought about that. Brand new guns. You know some people out here that's working can't afford an AR-15 rifle. Just think about that. They can get a gun before they can buy a steak. <laughs> Crazy. Scoreboard keepers, man. American generals affected by it, but obviously black communities are affected the most by it. All right, I'm gonna bring in our disagreeers. Here we go. Ooh, where to start? <laughs> So I think if you want to talk about systemic racism, and I do I have a background in criminal justice reform, gun control is one of the most systemic. Wait a minute. Criminal justice reform, are you already under the suspicion that there is some unfair treatment going on? That there's uh, a need for criminal reform? Is it criminal reform or is it a problem with the ju justice system? Which one is it? Criminal reform is you, you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to find ways to 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 make the criminals better to stop them from being repeat offenders. I mean, criminal reform. That's not what he was talking about. He was talking about a systemic problem. So I don't know where you're about to go with this, but you're talking about people possibly that have already been convicted and that are guilty. He's talking about stopping things before they, it even happens. So let's see where she's going. Racist laws on the books dating back to slavery, where we prohibited slaves from having guns because obviously an armed population could rise up. After slavery ended, you had the black codes continuing to try to block black people from being able to access guns because they weren't full citizens. Then you had the 14th Amendment come in, so now oh. everything should be clear. But no, states started putting in facially neutral laws in the 1870s, where basically they still had things on the books to block black people from getting guns. That's a history mm -hmm. that has followed us. I love that you brought up the Black Panthers. This should be a wake-up call, yes. When the black community has started to organize after things like the Atlanta massacre and the Tulsa race riots, what happened? They started arming themselves, they started rising up. You had the deacons of defense that were out here guarding Martin Luther King Jr. and they came in and squashed them. Shortly after 1964, you get the Civil Rights Act. 1968, they come in and pass the Gun Control Act, which creates a system that has a background check and all of this, but most importantly, it starts stating things that people can be stripped of their gun rights for. And what's chief among it? having a felony. Who's most likely to be arrested? Black people are six times more likely to have a record than white people. This is the scam. It has always been about eliminating black people's rights to access their second amendment. It's super racist. And today we see that continuing to play out in the black community. So, but to say that like gun control or guns are the problem, no, like in fact, what we're doing is we're making them more likely to be targeted by police. This is where you get stop and frisk. It's about gun control. They only get something off them like 3% of times, but it gives them the excuse to come in and shake them down. You have, I think 20% higher likelihood that black people to this day are convicted, sentenced, and given sentencing enhancements, that's from the Sentencing Commission, mm -hmm. if they are black. So this is something that has continued to be targeted against the black community. And what I can't understand from but your guess, side is, why you would saying, you come in and say, give that same government more power? But are you, <laughs> like, saying, are you saying there's an issue where black people don't have access to guns? Well, she threw me a curveball. Because for one, one, one minute there, I thought she was sitting on the wrong side. I mean, because everything she said was basically true. But I still get the feeling that she's still, you know, she's all about her Second Amendment rights. No matter what kind of issues are going on within the, the community. Um, what I have to say about that is that, look, um, too much of anything is a habit. If you have too many, you have kids in these communities that don't know how to shoot guns. And I don't care. It, it, innocent people get hit. Because they're not going out here. Going to any gun ranges. These, it's like cowboys and, 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 and Indians. You know. And I mean literally. They're out here just shooting. And just it's just a war. It's just a war. There's no rhyme and no reason to it. They're walking around with guns. Because they disrespected somebody. Or did something to somebody. Or maybe they got the wrong colors on. Or maybe they're from the wrong part of town. Those are the wrong reasons to have a gun. 
or to feel as though you need one. Yeah. Like well, they need like more legally. Guns. Like black people need no, more I guns. But I'm, I feel like I'm hearing two contradictory things because yeah. I'm hearing black communities have a gun think... issue because they have too many. See that? Remember, I just told you. I just told you. I thought she, Hannah was sitting on the wrong side for a minute because I was feeling the same thing. She's on that side. But yes, she was defending, um, you know, some causes that go on the anti-gun gun side, even though I know she's pro-gun. Firearms. You're saying Black they don't communities have, enough. have a gang issue. They have a violence issue. They have a poverty issue. These are things that lead to criminality. But when you come to black people being able to legally access the right to carry a gun and not being shaken down by the government for it and not being incarcerated for it and permanently stripped of their right to vote after they've been caught with a gun, yes, this has been a complete disenfranchisement of the Second Amendment towards the black community. And we. Okay, I see what she's saying. Because she's talking about regular. Uh, quote unquote, black folk that don't have any uh, any records. Um, they're not in any gangs. They are here just living a, a regular life and they're at working class citizens and they just want to protect themselves. Yet. A police officer can come pull you over. Stash some drugs on you. And before you know it, you have a criminal record. And now your Second Amendment goes out the out the window because now they can come to you. Knowing that you can't protect yourself fully and take full advantage of you. And the stop and frisk was to catch somebody with a gun that wasn't supposed to have one. So they knew the probability of that was very high that they could catch somebody, um, a, a convicted felon probably with, with a gun, knowing he wasn't supposed to have one. And where does that put you? Right back in jail. So I see what she's saying. We can talk about the violence issues happening because I think they're government related too, but that's not the guns that are creating the violence so you issues think in these the communities. So you think if that area had more guns, there'd be less violence? I think if you had more gang intervention, I think if you had ceasefires, no, I think if you had No, but I'm asking in general, ins. would more guns help? No, I don't think so would because less, I don't have less, violence issues. Would less guns help? I don't, right. I've seen no indication of that because you have it's, a violence it's, issue. It's, it's funny you to me. You have a poverty it's, issue. It's funny to me. Yeah. No, I agree. We agree. We, oh, really? I, I think, think we agree on that. Like you're talking about the over-policing, yeah, the being racist about who gets the gun. That's what we have. Violence yeah. comes up because of different issues, right? Like sometimes I think mental health gets vastly overblamed for these things. Occasionally, yes, but more often it is because of the fact that people don't have opportunities. They get involved with gangs. They're right, looking right, right. for places to go. Violence is very limited Ooh. to people under age 25. Once their brain is fully developed and once they get the resources they need to right. get on a better pathway out of these the communities, you see violence. No, we fully agree. The, the, yeah. thing, the, thing, the, thing, the thing funny to me is y'all talk all this violence, but I'm in the streets with these people. The same people that you talk about come up to me. I make YouTube videos. I get banned all the time. I teach pro Did y'all see what I said about him? Y'all see what I said about Black Rambo? Didn't I tell y'all that he feels as though he needs those guns because he's, in them, he's out in them streets? By choice, it sounds like, too. So he don't have to be out there. He wants to be out there. Nobody's asked him yet, though, and I'm very curious. I want to know if he shot somebody. I want to know if he shot somebody out there before, a human being. He hasn't said that. He hasn't brought that up yet. But I want to know if he's pulled his gun out on some of those people or if he's running around and have people in fear because they know that he has 300 guns. I want to know that. I want to know that, and I need somebody to ask him that question. Proper stuff, how to fly with a gun, how to do this with a gun. I get banned. You can't even find my stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know what? People come up to me and say, hey, Rambo, man, I really appreciate you, man. Without you, I wouldn't know how to do this. I wouldn't know how to do this. Hey, Rambo, I make bullets. You know how many calls I got from people? Look, I got goosebumps. Calls I got from people say, your bullets wow. saved my life. But are you wow. saying violence isn't an issue in no. those communities? Uh, what, what is it an issue wow. in every community? It's gangs, man. I but, think but your you're, violence you're is saying, like you're it's higher the in of more guns would those have. black communities. Well, I, well, I can't say more guns will help. I think more control with like gangs and stuff. It's not like regular people just running around just shooting them up, killing what, but people. But where do the gangs get their guns? Right. What, what, guess what? From anywhere. Real you quick. don't think they well, came well, from well, overseas? Well, 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 you, you, you telling no, me, no, no, you telling overseas. me, you telling me a boat of guns like never came from overseas? Well, well no, it, no, it, it no. relates oh, to the God. government. You're telling me they never a, shipped guns from overseas? No, no. I know the people that used to do it, man. What well, you talking about? We do know that in about 40% of homicides, 
they were obtained illegally. So where they got it, how they got it illegally, this is one other thing I wanted to address when you guys were saying about guns getting out stolen off cars. I had a gun stolen in my car. I'm very good with my gun. I would never take it off my person if it were in my control. I had to take it out because I was out of the Capitol in Tennessee lobbying. I wasn't allowed to take it into the governor's office, even though he could carry in there. But I had to put it in my car, put it in my glove box. It was a last minute thing. And I was like, okay, I guess I have to like leave this in my car. Did you lock your like, Locked my car. Yeah. yeah, I did everything I could. Broken, stole it. This uh, is how people, and I it's literally, lie. I mean. Do you, do, you think in that case, do you think in that case, if you weren't allowed to carry a gun in your car on you, that it wouldn't have gotten stolen? Had the government not disarmed me and made me go put my gun in my car, it wouldn't have but, been well, stolen. Well, Everybody well, why why have a gun? How come you can't have a taser? Or how come you can't have What's pepper spray? What's a taser going to do to a 250 pound well, man? It doesn't matter how much he weighs. Ooh, justice. Ooh, justice. That's a good question. And look at Hannah's face. Look at Hannah's face. She went right to, this is what I'm talking about, people. You got to listen to these, to these folks. She went to the worst case scenario. Well, how's a gun going to stop a 250-pound man? I mean, how's a taser going to stop a 250-pound man? See, he just asked her, why can't you use a taser? Because she wants to use deadly force. That's what that is. That's what that is. She wants to use deadly force. She wants to be able to have the power to unalive somebody. Hey, listen, listen, you can just matter. tase them when and pepper spray up and then run away. Have you not seen people getting tased and continue to come at you? Like, that does but not... But I think there's an extreme of, like, you're going to... People get tased and continue to come at you. See? People, and when you tear back the layers, the truth comes out. Justice came out like a sniper just now. Why can't you use a taser? That's all he said. Oh, you ever seen people use a taser? Those people that keep coming at you are on drugs. She wants to be able to unalive somebody. I'm telling you, man. We need... To protect yourself. If someone walks behind you and shoots you, what did the gun do? Did it help you? It did. I want to kind of get some clarity because I, I still feel like I'm hearing like a contradictory thing. Yes. Who is in favor of there being more guns in black communities? And then, and why is that? So according to the Department of Justice and also the Pew Research Center, as the number of guns have increased in this country, as the gun rate ownership has increased, so has the homicide um, rate has decreased. And it's decreased not just for homicides, but also for suicides. So statistically, yeah. we actually know that as there are more guns, you actually have suicide less just, violence. Suicides just reached the highest right. peak this year. Nope, not the highest peak. The yes, highest peak since about 1980 as well, exactly. but not okay, the but, highest peak. But we have the highest level of guns we have today, and we have the highest level of suicides today. No. Or one of the highest levels. It's, right. it's people, gone up. So people have a mental health issue because they want to kill themselves, well, and they just happen to have a no, gun. No, but she's or, saying or, that it goes. We'll dig into mental health. Or medicines we'll dig around. into mental health in a minute. If you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If you live somewhere, you couldn't eat, you couldn't feed nobody, you got guns all the way around your house, Everything you 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 wouldn't get a gun to protect yourself. But that's what we and said. And they breaking yeah. in doors and but, no. but, but criminals all over. You can move, Black Rambo. Why would you even want to raise your kids in that kind of environment? To, to be honest, for me, uh, like that, I so you're saying you would you would get rid of like murder being illegal because clearly people right. still murder, right? You can't stop it. But but why do we have murder being illegal if it still happens? What's because the point? you want to catch people. Because like, you, like, like, on, them so them so, so we're there. So you get it. So we know that like by having these laws, it will still reduce it. We see yeah, it. Yeah, definitely going to reduce it. There should be laws that people like us. That's where we need to agree on, which is won't make a more reduction. Wait, we will. I don't Did you think say so. the law shouldn't apply to people like No, you? I'm saying you guys are talking about banning guns. All of a sudden we went straight to like we are anti-gun and we are pro-gun to like let's ban guns. Why are you so eager to take away the freedom of people who use weapons properly for the sake of well, people who are going to go a, and use them improperly? It's a control it's, this is the of me saying, uh, People, it's a huge difference between Patriot Barbie and Hannah. I want you all to pay special attention to that. To those two women that are pro-gun. There is a huge difference between the two. One seems responsible and the other one doesn't. One seems responsible and the other one doesn't. <clears throat> she understands. She's not out here looking for a gun to uh, unalive somebody. But Hannah gives me the, the impression that she's, she wants to unalive somebody. Patriot Barbie didn't say anything about what what if what if there's a 200 pound man 
Patriot Barbie said even if her husband is is dealing with some type of issues, she's going to take his gun away from him. So she's making all kinds of sense right now to me. Patriot Barbie seems more mature about this situation. She seems more mature about being a gun owner. She understands the ramifications of it if she just fires it on somebody. She understands that it can unalive somebody. And she seems like she wants that to be the last resort before she has to put her gun on, on another human being. Hannah sounds like she wants it on her hip and want everybody to see it. Right now, there's 300,000 cases of drunk driving a year, and of those, a small fraction get in a car accident. Why take away my right to drink and drive just because no, no, you no, can't we'll hold your, your liquor? No, no, we'll take away your car, because your car cannot drink, drive itself, no, no, just no. like a gun cannot fire itself. Sure, so if you take me, wh- away my ability to own and fire a gun... Her analogy's right. Because, because your weapon is the about, car. Yeah. Your, your weapon, weapon is, is you the car. abusing the car. The car is a weapon. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about you. We're not talking about you. You're responsibly using the car. Anyone on this side in favor of, you know, restricting... Law abiding um, citizens access. I to believe guns. that in nobody in this life should have a gun. So, okay. I, I, but I, I'm not the one to say that you shouldn't. You know, I'm I'm, I'm all about nonviolence. I, I don't believe in um, harming or or, or or putting more suffering against so, so, any. Since well, I think the fundamental. Life, so I don't believe anybody. The fundamental have aspect of the Second Amendment is not to harm people. It's the it's right to bear arms and defend yourself. So against the terrain government. Oh, we'll, the get, we'll get to that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Let's go back to the problem. Remember, we're talking, just in this section, we're talking about gun violence destroying black communities, whether or not you agree with that. I feel like I can speak to it because I just graduated high school and I'm a black student. I went to school at a primarily black and Hispanic school. So there's like a Ooh. bit of I don't want to say gang presence, but that kind of like vibe, I guess. Mm. I was mm-hmm. worried sometimes that people were going to bring guns to school and it had been threatened a couple of times. We had to skip school. I think, you know, if they didn't have access to these guns, they, first of all, the gangs wouldn't have, have as much power. And, you know, I wouldn't have missed out on quality learning time because these people threatened to bring a gun into school. And look, I can't say that it happens any more or less at like a primarily white school, but I'm just speaking from my experience. Guns were an issue and there was gonna be like, there's a possibility of like real violence happening, you know? Can I, can I point something to that too? I, I think if we focused on gun-free zones, we could kind of question why it is that you had to leave the premise too, right? So these gang members would come to your camp. Before gun-free zones, there was drug-free zones also, yet. Drug dealers were still selling drugs right outside the school. So, Michael, I know you're trying to make a point there, but they already tried that with drugs also. And in some of these schools, they were selling drugs right outside, and it's supposed to be a drug-free zone. So, I, don't, I, I can't give you a point there, Michael. And would hinder your education. So what would happen if the administration or staff was loaded and ready to protect children instead of allowing mass shootings in children to, to occur? What, what would happen? Okay, so I actually really hate that argument. Like, we should have the teachers and administration should have guns. More guns is not going to help anything because at the end of the day, like, let's just say you shoot the school shooter, right? Then that's still a dead person, right? And their life isn't worth anything more or less to me than right. my friend's life. Because a life is a life, right? And I'm not advocating wanna... for, for people to be killed, right? <laughs> However, when you're in, in a school situation and you're dealing with a person's life, it's seconds Have you away ever been from... in that situation? Well, I have, and it's been a scary situation. Mm. I was a teacher for five years, a public school teacher, Mm. and I was a teacher when they were trying to arm teachers. Mm. There are so many issues that teachers deal with on a day-to-day basis. Having a loaded gun in my classroom with 19 special education preschoolers is not on the top of my list. That would not make Mm. me feel more comfortable. That would not make me feel like my students are more comfortable. Well, definitely not that. statistically, it would make you more safe. No, it wouldn't. I mean, can we talk about gun-free zones, or is there a prompt on this, or can I go? Because... So we looked at the data around this, and over 90% of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. If you get rid of every gun, right, you get rid of every gun, look at the countries that already did it, what happens? Australia Japan. had... Okay, uh, what happens? Japan. What happens? They, what happens? They had I, I lived in Japan. So they, they, they start stabbing people. 
Okay. Right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? Also have the stab goes rates up, of right? Stab is a lot easier to Hold on. A stab is a lot easier? Right, right. Getting, to recover from. Recovery. Are you sure? Okay, we're yeah, sure. Yeah. We've kind of moved to a lot of different areas, but I do want just a show of hands. Who is in favor of action to remove illegally obtained firearms from communities? Nobody wants illegal guns in a community. I mean, I, I have some, I, what does that require when it comes to the policing and the interactions that they're going to have with the people in those communities? This is the same thing to me as saying, like, should we go in and remove all legal drugs? Like, no, product bans don't work. It doesn't work if you ban drugs. It doesn't work if you ban abortion. It doesn't work if you ban immigration. It doesn't work if you ban drugs. They're still gonna people are going does to it obtain it. Issue? And just because somebody has a legally so obtained gun does not mean they are a violent person. Reduce? And I just want to get a your opinion clearly on this. Do you think there's a correlation between the presence of illegally obtained firearms and the rates of violence in sure, certain communities? Sure, absolutely. But I also think you when you look at public policy approaches, to... you have to make sure that the secondary side effects of those approaches are not worse. And when you're talking about sending in police right. to clamp down on communities no, that happen to have no one, higher no rates, well, that is what you're saying, though. No one's that, that, requires, <laughs> that requires policing to come in and confiscate. But then what's, what's one so, proposed solution? I mean, community-informed programs. I mean, we see it in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. They have community safety programs where individuals go out who are not armed and they go around neighborhoods of domestic abuse uh, cases, mental health episodes when somebody's having a mental breakdown. They don't call police. Saying, no, man. he's right though. Right. Call-ins, operation yeah, ceasefire, yeah, yeah. like these things that's work. All good. Like, I would, like, I without would love firearms this, though, I that's what I'm proposing. Case. Listen, listen to what y'all Where is that working at? Are y'all going in the middle of Chicago, no, but I think in New should. Orleans, doing that type well, of shit? Well, some of these programs are. Some of these programs are. They're going into places like Oakland. They're working, and like this is interesting because I've worked around a lot of criminal justice reform. So I've worked with very left-wing people on this and most of them are not anti-gun because they recognize that there are so many secondary consequences to that and they recognize that the gun is not the problem the underlying causes of violence are and so yeah they do these community-based programs that are completely like free of government for the most part which is, like based love that and they come in and they have people who were formerly caught up in, in um, gang life they have people who've been victims of violence even they do these interactions where they go to the hospital when there's been a gang shooting and try to intervene and prevent there from being retaliation and yeah they work they do see a statistical difference in violence violence, a meaningful difference, and it's without having to involve the police or the government or come in and take She's living in a fantasy world. While, they, while those people are in the hospital trying to prevent gang retaliation, the retaliation is already going on out in the street. Somebody else will be in that hospital in a few minutes. You're living in a fantasy world. If so-and-so from, from this set is in the hospital and, and the set know who did it, the, 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 the play's already in action while you in the hospital. So while you sit up there talking to so-and-so who's in the hospital and you're trying to, get, trying to get him to get his act together and, and no retaliation when he gets out, there's somebody coming through the ER that has something to do with so-and-so that you're talking to in the hospital. Yeah, he's going upstairs on the seventh floor in surgery. They're trying to get like three or four bullets out of his back because he was running. He's paralyzed now. So you're in the wrong place. So Black Rambo actually had a, had a point, right? Or he asked, are you, let me put it on the board. Are you doing it in the middle of Chicago? Are you doing it in the streets of Chicago? Are you doing it in the streets of New Orleans? Are you doing it in the streets of Philadelphia? Are you doing it in the streets of Detroit? That was the question. And you said you're up in the hospital doing this, that, and the third. So Hannah and Black Rambo are not even agreeing. And this is the confusion that comes in. They're not even agreeing on how much damage these guns are doing on the street or in people's homes that don't know how to use them, especially kids. Let's go people's guns so okay, we i reset. think those things are great ideas middle ground hey before we go any further we want to take a moment see so you know i'm sitting up here and say thanks so much and i um and i'm listening to them and you know this is like the halftime right here so you know you got people that that's pro-gun and then and, and even on that side you have people that disagree like i noticed that Patriot Barbie was quiet the entire time on that topic right there. She seems so mature when it comes to her gun, her family, her children, her husband, 
and whoever, they seem so responsible with these weapons. They try to go by the, um, the letter of the law with their guns, having them locked up, lock boxes, telling their kids, you know, that, hey, look, look, these kids, kill, these guns, they kill people. And they seem like they give them the option that if they want to learn how to shoot that gun, they will. They won't force it on them. And they will tell them about the dangers of having one to the point that maybe these kids may not even want one when they get older. And I like the kids having that option. But if you're giving the kid the, the notion that, you know, that you're going to need this when you get older, I don't think that that's right. I don't think that that's right. I think the child... That's a, that's no different than than a than a parent forcing a, ch a child to play sports. Both a mental health and gun control issue. Will the agreeers please step forward? Mass shootings are they a mental health? I believe that they are issue? a mental health issue. You know, above all else. But when I hear you say gun control, I don't mean governmentally. I mean exactly what we talked about earlier, which is parents being more aware, parents not recognizing that there is a mental health issue, that there is a, medic a medication issue, that there is an emotional issue, distress in the home, and, and taking measures to protect their child. Most of the time, apparently, these children somehow have access to guns. And I, I think that if they were disturbed enough, we've heard stories in the 90s and 80s about kids bringing knives to school. Well, that's before they had access to guns. If they are distressed and emotional enough and they're wanting to hurt others or themselves, they will find a weapon. But unfortunately, we're living in a society where parents aren't taking as much responsibility for their weapons as they should. I think that the absolute like bottom line is that a mentally healthy person does not commit a mass shooting. Correct. And that's just I like- would, I would 100% agree. I think. Great point. If you are happy with yourself, you are happy, you are healthy in your mind, you are not- Did not tell y'all. Did I tell y'all that Barbie is on the wrong side? I got a feeling she's on the wrong side. Let's go back. Hold, hold on. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back. Hold on. I got a feeling that Barbie is absolutely on. I, I think she should be on. Um, I think she should be on the uh, on the anti-gun side a weapon but unfortunately we're living in a society where parents aren't taking as much responsibility for their weapons as they should yep. i think that the absolute like bottom line is that a mentally healthy person does not commit a mass shooting True. correct and that's just i like, would 100 percent agree i think if you think. are happy with yourself you are happy <laughs> and healthy in your mind you are not going to shoot up target or shoot up your school okay so there, there was a couple of things that you said that kind of question me a little bit. You know, mental illness is completely promoted as propaganda in the media, right? So when you look at the rate for mental health issues in comparison to the amount of mass shootings related to that, it has nothing to do with a mental illness. It has to do more so with mental disorders because these people, they're not relying on medication to consciously know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, they're just lacking empathy. So I, th I think- Wait, what's the difference between- And that's between like a mental issue, right? What's the, like, what's the difference between we mental illness and mental disorder? Well, a mental disorder is definitely something that has to do with your sense of removing empathy, consciously knowing you're aware of your situation, similar to a sociopath. It's a mental health issue in the sense that there's a disorder and obviously depression and bipolar disorder is definitely along those lines. I mean, there's so many environments. Michael, guess what? You're responsible for your team losing a point because if you have one, you have the other. If you, if you have one, you're on the way to having the other. If you got disorders, you're on your way to mental illness, brother. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're talking about. They're not in separate boats. You're in the same boat. So you tried to make a point by confusing the people, but you wasn't c confusing scoreboard keepers. We took a point away from you for that. If you got a mental disorder, you're on your way to mental illness. At some point, it's all going down the same route. that kind of instill you to, to become that. A lot of times you're born that way. You look at the way it's just being perpetrated in the media and it's instilling fear among a, a wide variety of people. You know, you see this glorified scheme that's being constantly spread over, which makes people fearful of their lives, which makes people maybe not want to own a gun. I, I just keep caution with, 
with reading the news because there's a huge video on, uh, for example, Candace Owens talking about the situation where the government does perpetuate a sense of fear and control onto humans in order to hinder their ability to be free and exercise freedom. So when it comes to mental health issues and the correlation with mass shootings, it doesn't add up. So I'm a mental health therapist. Um, what you're trying to say mostly is like, it's creating this fear because obviously like mental illness, it's not just like growing exponentially, we're just identifying things more. And I think what you're trying to say simply is like, it's trying to almost like create fear. Oh, you have a mental illness, I should be afraid of you. Like you're gonna, right. and it's like, no, I mean, this is what I don't like about it, which is that everyone has uh, mental struggles. Mm -hmm. um, so Correct, so let's just ban everyone from owning a gun. Yeah, well, and that, that, I mean, that when it comes does, down to fixing it. There's a slippery it, slope there, so it's. I think he's talking more about yeah. Providing resources. Yeah, and providing addressing. resources, and, and like I think the other way to understand it too is, and and I think what she said, which I kind of disagree in that sense, which is like, hey, a normal person wouldn't do that. Yes and no. I mean, maybe not mass shootings, but like suicides and things like that. Well, we have what we call Z codes, and Z codes in the DSM-5 are basically um, events in people's lives that may trigger short-term versions of these things. So when I uh, diagnose someone, uh, I take into account. So if you came to me and said like I'm really depressed, and I'm like, oh, why? Oh, my dad just died. I'm gonna go, okay. That's normal, like obviously it, it, your struggle, but in that time, you could still shoot yourself, be suicidal. But in that but time, it, you're also not mentally healthy. Yeah, but, but at the same time, like no one's mentally healthy at all times. So, when, and then this, I think someone said this earlier, which was like, hey, like it's on the parents if they don't catch the kid. It's like, no, because that's like telling every parent, hey, if your kid committed suicide, it's your fault, you're an yeah. idiot, you're stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, no. People go through ups and downs heavily. Right, right. Yeah. Maybe it's just like not natural to want to kill other people? I don't know, I feel it, like that's, it's, it's so not, if you do want to, then there's yeah. something maybe wrong in your brain. It's not that everyone with a mental health issue would shoot up a school, it's that anyone that would go and shoot up a school clearly exactly. has a mental issue. Right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 what's going on here that, that we feel Good is, point. is causing? We don't, like have, the we don't have Jesus. Right. I need the world yes, to come back to I God. Agree. I agree, I agree. And that's what's happen is like program people tend to be more religious and tend to view it that way through that lens. Like I'm atheist, like I, well, let's, let's disassociate religion from just loving Christ, right? Because those are two different things. Religion definitely has its own nuance that I don't even want to get into. But just loving God, I think, is what. what but she's I think the most, to say. the most religious states are the ones with the highest shootings. Um, uh, uh, so. Actually, the ones with the most gun control laws. No, that's, not, that's actually, actually not true. The top five are actually the ones with the least homicides and guns and deaths and guns. True. The top. Top five in terms of lax guns are actually Oklahoma, Kansas, Mississippi, Alabama. They have the highest rate of shooting. Right. Um, justice and uh, Sarah. Yes, I also want to bring up, you know, um, whether it be the Buffalo mass shooting that we've seen a white supremacist go in and shoot about almost 10 plus black people, or um, the other shooting where Kyle Rittenhouse uh, shot a bunch of people during the 2020 in uprisings. In self defense. Um, we see these instances people. of white individuals shooting black people in America. There's never been an instance where I have seen anybody on TV, um, psychologists say this person was having a mental health episode. There's never been, a, and I could keep going down in the last five years of several mass shootings where black and brown people have been killed by white supremacists. And there's never been an instance where they say, this person's having a mental health episode. Let's give this guy a break. So I. I kind of step back from saying that mental health is a main issue around gun violence because when it comes to white supremacists, when it comes to people saying they want Jews to die and they shoot Jews, which ha has happened, yeah. there's never been, a, uh, it's never been an instance of, oh, this guy has a mental health episode. In my opinion, though. And you won't, Justice. And you won't. That's not something that they associate with those type of actions. You don't hear about those kind of things. They're not going to come out and say, um, uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse had some type of dementia symptoms. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to hear about that. You're not going to hear about it. I don't even know why you just brought that up because you, you were making points for the uh, mental illness side. You were making points for them. Because just because you didn't hear about it, doesn't mean that they, that he didn't have it. Obviously, he was crazy. Obviously, he was crazy. Obviously. If you can go out and take the law in your own hands and you can do the things that they did, they did and not have a problem killing, 
then you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. And obviously there's something, there's something wrong there. And it takes, it shows, it rears its head in other parts of their life. You know, if it's before the fact or even after the fact. And if you look now, he's doing weird things. Like all of them, all them kids. They're doing weird things. They were doing weird things prior also. So they have something going on. He definitely wasn't normal. That wasn't normal. Like, being racist is sort of a mental health disorder. But I know yeah. it's not like a diagnosed thing. It's just like But in America, opinion. they don't say that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They say, oh, he had a troubled past, and his parents didn't treat him right, so he shot 10 black and brown people in the school. We have to come at it, like, multifaceted. Yes, and it's yes. so hard to actually attack this because we could be like, hey, let's worry. Riley, for you being so young, you are so intelligent. You are so intelligent for being so young. And somebody obviously raised you right because you and I both agree on the same thing. I believe that racism is a mental illness. I believe it is a mental illness. Anybody that's racist, it's because they have something going on upstairs mentally, whether it be insecurity, jealousy, um, whatever it is, it's a weak emotion. And it comes out as hate. So they're coming up short somewhere to where they have to, where they envy a person so much that they dislike them. So I totally agree with you. I, I totally, Riley, I totally agree with you. Because under that is jealousy, envy, and all other types of things. So it's definitely, definitely racism is some type of insecurity and some type of mental illness. about mass shootings okay but what about okay what and each one can be attacked in a completely different way and that's why i tend to go like look i'm not me and him are different i'm not ban all guns i'm like let's restrict them until there's a happy medium where we reduce these suicides reduce mass shootings but also people like you guys can own them let's hear from sarah yeah. i i just want to say i agree with what you're saying in that you know oftentimes mental health is blamed. People pick and choose which communities we use it as a you know, factor or not. Um, I also think that oftentimes when we look at mass shootings that have happened, there are signs that point to this person needed support, specifically in schools, right? A lot of times um, you might see kids who are making certain drawings or um, have made certain comments. And a lot of times these kids maybe weren't getting the um, counseling services they needed at school, or sometimes they are, you know, maybe uh, diagnosed with a disability, and maybe they're not. And those there's issues that go into that as well. But I think that there are signs that show um, that somebody needed support or was being bullied. Uh, but our culture tells us, you know, there's video games, there's all of these stories about like, well, get your guns, get your, you know. Uh, the internet becomes this like place of solace for students who are looking for support and looking. Sarah. I know you're, you used to be a teacher for five years, but guess what? The problems that the kids have, you don't just find them in school. They came from home. So when, they, when these kids had these problems from home, you just noticed them when they came to school. So it's not like something that you could have diagnosed in there just because a kid was drawing pictures and so on and so forth. This kid was traumatized before they got to school. They did not pick up these bad habits in school. They came to school with them. They're acting them out when they're around different people. So it's not like something that you would have picked up on. And, and, and I mean, the parents knew. But the parents are not going to come and say, look, my kid got some issues because we, we've been doing drugs around them for, for the last 10 years. You know, every time my husband gets high, he want to beat on them. Like, you don't hear those kind of things because... They don't want you sending diapers to their front door. So you're, you're, I can't give you any points, Sarah. I cannot give you any points. You're trying your best to make them, but I can't do it because this is not something that you would see right away. And most of the time, it would, it, it, those kids are in school for years before people even catch on. Most of the time, they make it all the way to an AR-15 before anybody say, oh, little Bobby had issues at home. But I would say that 
if you were to go through your classroom on a yearly basis, you'll probably find one, maybe two in there every year that has some serious issues at home. But if he was strong mentally enough to cope with it, then he don't have he he may never end up being the one bringing an AR-15 to school. But 20 years from now, he may be the one to end up in jail for some reason or another. Or he may go out and live a prosperous life. Just never know. Looking for uh, a community that they're not getting at school. And when our culture is telling us, well, guns will be the solution, then yeah, they're finding that solace. They're the finding culture, that community. It's Hollywood and it's the government. Again, I think it's a combination. Because there, there is a huge documentary actually where Michael Bay, the director, uh, along with, with one of the uh, department chairs of the government, well, they would share how the government would have to filter and revise scripts in order to create the, the perpetuation of, of missiles and the sort of combat scenes that were, you know, because they had to keep control. They're advocating for this to be constantly perpetuated, and I can't emphasize it enough, it's really scary because a lot of people, they kind of keep this narrow mind of, oh, it's actually us, we're the problem, we're actually not the problem. But it's, I think that's part of our culture, the movies, Hollywood, what we but say, but I think not, that's it, part of it. It's the, our culture because the government has come in and has taken over as part investor, and that's a whole other nuanced conversation because I work in the entertainment industry, so I, I, I'm very aware of the situation. However, to, to my point, with, with mass shootings, the question and the prompt, uh, I think having more gun control laws creates more mass shootings. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I so understood if, from if the you prompt. have easier access to guns, there'd be less mass shootings. Correct. Yeah, and are you saying the person wouldn't have wow. went and shot, or that they would be stopped? Well, regardless, a person would not come in and shoot all these people if people were armed. So, like, so like Uvalde, right? The 376 cops, they did a great job of stopping that shooter, correct? And it took them seven minutes, by the way. Just well, to go cops on. are not, that's another thing. But the they were, they were be trained armed? people with guns, and right. there were 376. How did that work? I just think that the government and the state and the police brutality that exists should not be allowed. And that's why people should, again, own guns and have the right to that freedom and express themselves with it. Because We're, we're going to get into, we'll have a, mm -hmm. a whole section dedicated to that. Let's bring in our disagreeers. Wow. Michael when made it comes no to sense. the actual prompt, about 4 to 6% of mass shootings are carried out by people with a mental illness. And I appreciate the nuances being discussed here because it's important. Mental health is a very easy scapegoat and it's very easy to point to when there are events that people just can't wrap their mind around. So the point is that it is, yes, a little of a mental health issue, but there are broader, more social concerns. I like that you brought up parenting. There's a shitty parent problem in this country. Let's just be frank, there is, and that's the real epidemic. And then lastly, it's a structural problem. The structure creates gun-free zones. As I started to mention early, earlier, over 90% of mass shootings are carried out in gun-free zones. The structure does not provide resources or early intervention techniques for people who are there on the ground. Um, I think putting more mental health officers and just counselors in general in schools would do a lot more than putting more cops in schools. Less than 2% of homicides are mass shootings in this country. So I appreciate that we're talking about this, but I feel like it often gets very overblown when we're discussing gun violence and its approaches because it is a bit of an anomaly. Um, and I know that often Do you think gets, it's unique to the United States? No, I was going to go there next, actually. Out of the, I think, 97 developed countries they've studied that have had mass shootings, we're 64th on the list. We're also number 64 when it comes to homicides yeah. per 100,000 people. Well, I mean, I think, I think just this last year, we had more mass shootings in America than calendar days. No. We, so, I mean, it was more mass shootings in America you can't just, just this numbers. last year. You have than more people days. in America than in most countries. We have a homicide rate of about like 1.5%, I think. We have a mass shooting rate of a little under 1.15%. We are 4.6% of the world's population. So, when you look at those statistics, no, it's not that we are more likely to have it here. I think we are a larger country by far. And I think the other thing that makes us lean more into violence in general is that we are living in a very diverse population. When you look at... Hannah, no. You're making excuses. You're making excuses. You're basically saying just because that man is bigger than me, I should lose the fight. That's what you're saying. No. The mass shootings are happening here because of whatever is going on in that person's world. 
It wouldn't matter if that person lived on an island by themselves or if he was among a billion people. Whatever the issues are, are that he's going through mentally, it doesn't matter where his location is that would stop it or prevent it. It's going to happen no matter where that child is, no matter what state he's in. If he's thinking about doing it, he's doing it. That's why it catches on all across the country. Why do you think these mass shootings travel around the country? Come on, Hannah, you got to do countries better. Countries that have lower rates of violence, they're more homogenous. It's difficult for people to get along. They often have not been given the techniques. You have many cultures that are often clashing. I think a lot of our violence issues actually traces back to that. Rambo. I just don't, I don't understand, man. I don't see what world they live in. You know what I mean? Like, there's, you can't change it. There's good people and there's bad people. I don't care what tests you want to do. I don't care what you want to do. Everybody's not going to hold hands and kumbaya. If somebody's going to want what you got, somebody's going to want what you got, somebody might want what that baby has. And I want to protect my family. Oh, they need to do this, they need to do that. It's like a yin and a yang. There's going to be bad. No matter what you do, I don't care if you get rid of every gun, every knife. Somebody might rob you. They might come in gangs and beat you to death. They, you just, you cannot get rid of it. What world are y'all in? But you, but you agreed earlier. You said that obviously if there were like a lot less guns taken out the street, that those things would drop, correct? Well, not to say it's gonna go away, but it would, it would drop. It, let's, let's think about this. How many like guns, Australia let's, let's be real. Drop, How many guns there are on the streets? Drop. Huh? Um, There's 372 million. 372 million. million. Are there 372 million murders? No, All right, then. So why would it do it? Well, I, I agree. Be, I agree. With drinking and driving, there's 300 ca cases, 300,000 yeah. cases a year, and there's only a couple thousand cases of people crashing. So yeah. you also agree that we should be able to drink and drive? No. Why? Because. Why? why you can drink to a certain limit, can't yeah, you? Yeah, but if, can't you drink to a certain limit when you're driving? They blow a test. You can drink to a certain limit, right? Uh, no, so no, you no, can't no. get drunk. No, you can. No, you can drink. Hold on, you can still get a DUI under the limit. So what's so, the sense of even blowing then? Because if you are clearly impaired, and and so here's the thing: is like if I go, but I'm the best driver. Trust me. I, and this is the problem with having a debate like this with people who are very good with their guns. I'm okay with you guys having your guns because clearly you've demonstrated a hundred different ways that you know how to use it. But at the very least, yeah. let's take those steps to say. If you're a gun owner, prove that you know how to use it. Prove, same way we have to do with a car. It could just be an interview, it could be anything. There's a lot of people when you ask, them, oh, why would you want a gun? They're not good at lying. They're very obviously disturbed. And those things would reduce significantly a lot of these things have that happen. Have you ever purchased a gun before? I right. have tons of guns. So, so you know I have a you Golden have Henry 22, I so, have so, an AR. So you have to do a background <laughs> check, correct? No, no. So, so first off, most states don't even have that. 44 right. states no. don't even make What's you state? register. I never, I never saw a state And on top of that, when I bought check. my gun, I remember I was 18. There was a little qu quiz we had to take. Listen, this is a quiz we had to take. No, and wait, a minute, Tom, because wait a minute, Tom. Answer the question. What state doesn't have a background check? Simply, in his mind, making a gun sale is more important than safety. Mm. He leans over and goes, A, B. I mean, I knew there were very basic questions, but it was simply, where do you point a gun? Where's the safest place? And, and my friend who was with me, who wasn't very smart, we were kids, literally was getting them wrong, and he goes, it's B. Every, and I'm sitting every, there thinking now, older, going, well, they don't see, care. That, These people are not well trained. Every state is different. To, exactly. exactly. California yeah. is one of the strictest. Yeah. And yeah. still I walked yeah. in and bought a gun at 18 years old knowing nothing about it. My friend who couldn't even pass the test was able to get a gun. That should show you, and this is the problem with like having different areas. Chicago, when people bring this up in the shootings. Yeah, it's because Indiana is literally two and a half minutes away and you can walk in and get a gun. Yeah. There's no border checks between states. So it's a very complex issue. I want to ask a follow-up just to the whole group. Raise your hand if you think mass shootings are a uniquely American issue. And for the people who raised their hand, do you avoid yeah. mass gatherings because of concerns? I have before. There was like a free concert that was going on in my city. And when I saw all of the people and the lack of security, I was like, I need to go home because it was on the beach, mm -hmm. right? And there's not that many metal detectors or anything like that. I'm like, it would be really easy for someone to just bring a gun in here and I don't want to be a part of it. Anybody else have an opinion? You avoid uh, mass gatherings? I am originally from Denver, Colorado. I, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was in kindergarten when Columbine, Columbine happened. So I you know, grew up in schools, I'm sure the same way with you doing the active shooter drill. Wow. So that was something that was always on, or you know, that we knew about from the mm -hmm. time I was a child. But then there was also the shooting at the movie theater. Arvada, um, yeah. And Arvada, I was at a midnight yep. premiere that night. Uh, I luckily, I was not at that one. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I remember coming out and seeing police around because they went to the 
to movie theaters and surrounding area just in case mm -hmm. something was being planned at other theaters and thank god nothing happened to me and i you know i feel so passionately about it and uh for the people who you know they they, they did lose their lives that is a reality but that's something i can't like Every, like you go into a movie theater, you see the exits, and it's something that comes into your mind. Like, okay, shooting, that's right? where you go. But you what know? stops a bad guy with a gun? Not with letting him get a gun. Not letting him. If he has one, though. Okay, we're what no, stops him? But but that's what we're. You're not going to get rid of every gun, bro. No one's Let's get rid of it. Yeah, I think you're not going to get rid of every gun. So you can't get rid of all guns. Oh, Justice and then Barbie. Okay, I was just gonna say, you know, considering that, you know, uh, mass shootings are unique to America, in my opinion, I think it also has to do with the media's portrayal of mass shootings that um, inflict fear into people. Yeah, I think the media got a lot. I agree. For agree. example, Same. Alex Jones, no uh, who's a huge conspiracy theorist, basically put into the stratosphere that what happened at that, you know, Sandy Hook, what happened with all those little kids. Was he said it was staged. staged. It was yeah. staged. And since America has the, you know, you know, freedom of speech, it then gets people like Alex Jones and other people to continue this miseducation of how I just don't uh, feel safe occur. man we're, we're, right now if mm -hmm. somebody just wants to rob us right uh, just just anybody you just don't know somebody breaks in here I can't we're all dead that, Every yeah, one that's of us. I can't that's, 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 that's my faith that's my faith then I'm okay with that that's not compared to nuke that's compared to a car wreck so that that is the question if you guys want to get rid of all guns right which you just said quote that's never going to happen so now we know that guns exist they do but now I don't have the right to carry one. She doesn't have the right to carry one. You don't have the right to carry one. Someone comes into this building right now and, and points a gun at every single one of us. How are you okay with saying that my right to fire back and protect me and you and you and you, I shouldn't have it? He's allowed to have it because he went and got it illegally because you just said we can't well, get rid of all guns. But now I can't get one because I'm not a criminal. Because you can't destroy guns because a criminal will figure out how to make, make a, a new gun. kind That's of gun. That's what I'm saying. Like you there's can... gun parts all over the world. There's They'll everything put one that you can do. There's so ghost when you say... guns. But then, you can just... but then, and this is where this, okay, the problem with this conversation is things evolve, right? And right. guns are going to evolve. And if I have the ability to have in future 100 years from now, ability for a pistol to be able to shoot something that is as powerful as a grenade, are you going to be like, That's your right because if someone can have it, mm. I should too. It's the second or someone can. And that's the problem. There has to be some restriction. Unless you all believe that we should all be able to have nukes at our homes, grenades at our homes, grenade launchers we should have, at our homes. We, can, we should be able to have equal whatever the government has. Okay. That's then what it then, says on the Second okay. Amendment. That's why they put so it's the you, second you, thing you that they put on the amendment. So then you agree we should have nukes at our homes? Uh, uh, if I, 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 if I, I agree I can with the, the, one. the idea that the whole reason the government gave us a Second Amendment right was to protect ourselves from the uh, government. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. so we're going to get into okay, that. Okay, that's another okay. prompt. Let's reset. Yes. Our next prompt is other countries are jealous of our gun rights here in America. Will the agreeers mm. please step forward? Before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, y'all see the score, 45 to 30. Anti-guns in the lead. Um, they're making some uh, pretty valid points. Um, um, Pro-gun seems to be operating off of emotions and what ifs. I know they like to be prepared, um, and I don't have a problem with that, but it seems like you got two issues going on at the same time. You know, you have the what ifs and you have the look, you have the problems. You have the what ifs and then you have the problems that's in our society. And you're trying to like mend them together and trying to come up with a solution. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Let's go. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you're the fact queen. So I'm sure you're going to spout facts. I'm just going to spout what I what I see in here, right? Which is that we oh, this is going to be good, guys, because as I told you, I'm I'm like a I'm like a fan of Patriot Barbie right now. She seems mature with it. She seems very responsible with her guns. And Hannah, on the other end, as I told you before, she comes across to me as like she wants to unalive somebody. She wants to shoot a spider. You know what I mean? It's like the what ifs. So she instead of her, you know, you know, you're. She could pull out a, a taser and use a taser, but she'd rather use her gun because she's sure that that gun, it may kill somebody versus stopping somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Because there is a difference. You can, you can stop somebody right now or you can permanently stop somebody. Let's go. We do have gun rights and other countries do not have gun rights and they live under communism now because of what we just stated, that the Constitution 
gave us gun rights to protect ourselves from the powers of the government. And I am constantly reached out to from countries like Australia who say we are so envious of your gun rights. The minute mm. we lost our freedom was the minute we gave up our guns. And they do use the term we gave up. They accommodated the, the slow relinquishing of their right to bear arms, whether it be through banning certain parts, banning the certain amount of bullets that you can carry, taxing this kind of gun, saying that this kind of gun is a assault rifle, which is not what AR stands for. And now we're banning that. So little by little, it's not that they came in and said, everyone open your doors, we're taking your guns. They made it so hard to own guns that now these people don't have the ability to own guns and they claim that they lost their freedom and they, they say things like, I wish I had the rights that you had to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. This question's tough because people are not a monolith and within every country there's differences of opinions, even in ours, there's obviously differences of opinions. But I certainly think if you were to go and speak to countries like Cuba, or North Korea that live under communist dictators who have had all of their rights stripped from them. It starts with taking away their rights to self-defense and then you're left having to go swimming with sharks to get out of these countries and try to just get to a basic standard of living again. So I do think, yes, there are many people who are envious of what we have here. That's why you have so many people trying to come to America still versus many other countries because as a whole, despite our problems, this is a good country and it has a lot of opportunities for people that they don't have in other places in the world. I think there's people who very much want freedom and want to be able to defend it and would rather deal with the consequences or side effects or negatives of that freedom. And there's other people who want to feel secure, I think. They want the government to take care of them. They want to pretend that there are not real evils out there. And I think they often trade very serious negatives that they don't always notice for that security until it's too late. So I think if you were to talk to people in like England, are they regretting that right now? I don't know, but I think they should be. The Second Amendment defends all of the other rights. It's what stands in the gap. And if you look at what's happening to say free speech in England, it's terrifying. They're literally locking people up for Facebook posts at this point, same thing in Australia. So depending on where a country is at a given point and just depending on the type of person that you ask within it, I think you'd get different answers. But yeah, I think probably more than not are jealous of some of the freedoms we have here, including yeah. the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's bring in our disagreeers. I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? I'm so focused on what we got going on right here. I really couldn't tell you if another country is jealous or not. But I do know I got over 3.5 million followers, and they're not all Americans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I really can't tell you. That's why I didn't come up. I, I just don't know. I mean, you were in, you were in active duty, though, right? Marine Corps, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, what was... Did you think about that at all? In I was in Operation where? Iraqi Freedom. I was on an initial push, mm -hmm. front line. And a lot of people look at me, and they don't think I've you know, been to war and stuff, but they had guns out there. You know what I'm saying? They had guns. Where I went, I, I see countries with guns, so I don't know. I'm just a little curious. So you're saying like North Korea and Cuba, if they had guns, they'd be able to obviously overthrow the government, right? But you also said earlier that it's so easy to get a gun. They could just get guns. They could ship them in. So how can a country be so good at blocking guns if you guys said they cannot, it's impossible. I'm a little confused by that. How's that because possible? Because they have no trade possible. They have no freedoms. They have no travel abilities. They are literally stuck in their country. So yeah, if you want to put people in a communist dictatorship, Absolutely. it's very easy to keep them from accessing food or medicines or no, guns but, but or you anything. Said, but he, he said that you can ship them in illegally. But if they have shut down their borders. I think he was they talking don't, about here, though, That's America, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but, much, but I think people are a little bit confused. Cuba, people can go. My family goes to Cuba every year. You can go, people can bring things in. It's Perhaps you could, but I think it'd be very difficult because even flying with a gun here in the United States is very difficult from state to state. Yep, so no, I couldn't it's even come here with a gun. Heavily regulated but, but you in them. that way. You'd huh? have Through to get boats, it across right? the border. But I can't illegally. come to California at all with a firearm. Mm -hmm. but, I couldn't even wear all my jewelry. But what you're saying is there, is there is a world where a government can enact things and restrictions to. Yeah, if avoid you want to give away all freedoms, no capitalism, no free trade, no ability to actually have any command of your own destiny, then yeah, you can control a lot of things. Yeah. You control the media, you control the ports, you control, yeah, of course, but who would want to live that way? But, but what I'm okay. saying is, is you guys said. China does it. And I'll tell you something else. The reason you don't have those kind of mass shootings over there is because they're killing you. They're killing you. Their media over there is not hyping up mass shootings. If you do something over there, some countries, they'll cut your hands off for stealing. They're, they're doing things to you. Unlike here, we take them captive, give them McDonald's and a Coke soda, put them in a nice, comfortable jail cell. They're not tackled, they're glorified, basically. You know, versus China, who's going to, they're going to take you right out back 
to a gun range and it, and and it's going to be a firing squad that's why that's why you don't have those things over there over here it's different you make cnn you make the news abc you make the news and everybody knows your name Criminals can still yes. get America. guns. So we're regardless. talking about, yep. and, 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 and on there top probably of that, are guns. Say, yes. And what we're saying is there probably are guns in Cuba that have been but smuggled not in, organized. but and not enough to say when they try to organize. We want our free speech right. back. We're rising up. So, not enough. So they have is, to hide them. They have to pray to God nobody breaks in their house because they're going to have to shoot that that person to protect their yeah. family and then account for the gun they shouldn't have had. So this they're going to go to jail. So this is so my first master's was international relations. I focus on Middle Eastern uh, politics, and we look at Syria. America has not only given the rebels tons of weapons and tanks, and they still can't overthrow the Syrian government, which has pretty shitty military in comparison to us. So this idea that, like, oh, we need guns to protect ourselves from the government, things like that, we have Syria being backed by the U.S. and getting guns and weapons and still getting their ass kicked by the, the Syrian government. So You this also have is, the United States going to war for 20 years in the Middle East and losing to the Taliban, right? Well, I, like, I, I so agree. having a bunch of weapons, even if the government doesn't, it's, it's about organizing, it's about structure. But yes, a population that is armed, they have a fighting chance of trying to fight back. Let's say right now, right? Phones are down, lights are on, no, you have no communication to nothing. The world is going to shit. How would you survive? I, uh, the gun would be the least of my worries. Well, how would you? How would you feed yourself? I would do. I would, there's a million plants? different ways. <laughs> plants. Yeah. Plants. Uh, you I'm, think I'm, nobody I'm, gonna come steal I'm, your plants? But I, but I, I'm, I'm serious. No, no, no food. You're laughing. I've been to Katrina. You have you ever been to Katrina? It's the Ram Black Rambo. Black Rambo. You're assuming the worst case scenario for everything. For everything. I mean, you're just talking about a lawless society, a lawless world. I get it. There's a possibility that anything can happen. If you're talking about preparing for Armageddon, I get it. But we got laws and police here. So those type of things are not supposed to happen. So I understand what you're saying. But it's not supposed to happen. You're preparing for a, a war. Is what you're saying. You don't need police, Rambo. You don't strike me as the type that feels though you need to call the police for anything. And I'm with you on that. You'd rather take the law in your own hands. And you need to just say that out loud so people really understand where you're coming from. You need to say it out loud. Everybody was trying to fight for their life. They had no food, no nothing, no pampers, no water. You've but never been in a hostile how's environment. How's guns going to help that, though? Because you could go get it. But, but it's you have to. I want to you, Rambo, I want to. He's saying if someone right. will take is a gun, someone will hold you up stuff. for your stuff. Rambo, is that you something gonna you had to do? Now, I didn't have it, but I have friends because I live an hour away from New Orleans, but it got flooded out. If you have a baby and your baby has no milk, so it didn't happen where you lived at. It happened in them hoods, man, where people already didn't have anything. But it didn't happen to where you were. See, tell the whole story. That wasn't going on just anywhere. That was going on in places where they were less fortunate of having things. So be honest. A newborn baby in solution, and they got it over there. Right. You're you know what I'm saying? Him. You no, have to. He's not saying he will. He's saying someone else will. Well, someone will. Yeah, I, I want to pounce around. back on that yeah. because there were a lot of black Americans who yeah, did shot, try yeah. to go get food, mm -hmm. get water, and guess what? Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, the, uh, the, the FEMA and, the, and the, the National Guard mm -hmm. shot some of those black Americans. That's true. That's who we're true. going to. So you're yeah, saying if they had a gun, if they had a gun, they got shot without a gun. So why? So why not have one? I, All right, then. You got shot I, I, feel, I, I feel like that, that wouldn't solve anything, even if they had a gun. They were but, black. But, but, just, they were but they didn't this, have this a gun. This is the issue, though, of debating this, which is like th they're doing this debate in the world where there are guns everywhere. Right. We're creating an environment where there are far less guns, meaning if that happened in the future, they would be far less likely to get shot at in general. And this is why it gets very confusing, because yeah. I agree with them. In this scenario, why, is why I have guns now, is like, since everyone has them, like nukes in the U.S. and in the, the international stage, 
We need them. Right. But if we can reduce them, then we need less of them in, uh, personally. Right. I'm advocating for a different world where we can push towards something a little bit different, where we would need Have you ever resources. been in a hostile environment? Well, I yeah, I grew up in the Middle East. In, mid in middle yeah. doing what? Like, in me. Lebanon, we grew up in the Middle East. There was war, there was bombs. Everywhere we went, there was tanks. And you didn't think, you needed, you didn't think nobody needed to fire on? The, these environments are different. Doing a third world country versus first world America is drastically different. And to I, I, say, I, it, hey, like, all of these like countries living have in, this, I heard living in, I, I heard living in Chicago is like living in a third world country. Chicago ranks actually. I heard actually, living in New Orleans is like living in a third world country. If Chicago's we give up our guns, we will be a third world country. country. New Orleans country. is like the murder capital. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so England's a third world country. Right. We're going to reset um, and then we'll do a, a prompt specifically about <laughs> citizens be. defending them. Again, Black Rambo, if New Orleans is the murder capital, why are you living there? Who wants to live in a murder capital? Think about that. Who wants to live in a murder capital? Nobody. Yeah. England might as well be. Citizens should have guns to hold the government in check. If you wow. agree, step this forward. This is going to be good here. This is going to be on, good. Be Nobody needs a nuke. You know, he keep on saying nukes, nukes. Man, come on, who go buy a nuke and put it in the house? Yeah, of course. We got a problem there. But guns... Regular guns, I think everybody should have the right to get it. Mm -hmm. Why not? So let's be real. It's the Second Amendment. It's the second thing that they put in the amendment. And what is it for? The right to protect from a terrain government. It is the second thing that they put. Mm -hmm. The first is what? Freedom of speech, right? It's the second thing they changed. It's the second thing. So it, it got to be important. It's not that we're all here, like, waiting for the day that we can overthrow the government, yeah. right? And I'm not <laughs> looking at how, how I can get a nuke to, to overthrow the government. Right, right. I care more about my personal self-defense against common everyday predators, and I've experienced them. But the reality is, the ones with the guns have more control and more power, right? So if the government has all the weapons at their disposal to tell us what to do and we have nothing, then we are befallen to, to accommodate whatever it is that they require. Barbie, are you a voter? Because you voted for this government. You voted for this government. So and you put you were actually the one that put them in place. So you can't complain about what comes with it just because you didn't understand all the laws. You were voting for what you wanted personally, but now you don't want all the other things to come with it. I don't think that's fair. Now I've been siding with you the whole entire time, but we listen to everything around here on the scoreboard keepers, Barbie. You voted for this government. And this government is in place, not just because they put some other things in there that you may not, may not like. They didn't guarantee that to you. The only thing that's guaranteed is death and taxes. We are the slaves. We are not free. We must do what they say because they hold all the power. So I think it takes a long time for citizens to rise up. I think our government is horrendous. I think it's very big. I think it usurps people's liberties every day. It does many injustices, probably the time for people to rise up was a long time ago. But whether or not it enables you to effectively overthrow the government, yes, maybe sometimes. You know, you have like the Battle of Athens in Tennessee, which was after World War II, where the veterans came back to a very corrupt police force that was rigging elections and that was unjustly incarcerating people. And they organized and they ran the sheriff out of town and they took over their government again. So yes, I do think that it is fundamental. I think our founders gave us that right in order to try to hold the government at bay. I think they had an understanding of power systems and how they always tend to grow and encroach on people's freedoms and liberties. And I think that were it not for the Second Amendment, were it not for the proliferation of guns and of people actively using their Second Amendment in this country, we probably would see a lot greater injustices. But I think if you look at the trajectory of countries that have disarmed people and where that's gone for them, it has increasingly led to a worse and worse quality of life, fewer freedoms, and a deterioration in the basic liberties and freedoms that they enjoy across the spectrum. What is citizens standing up to the U.S. government with the military that it has look like? It looks terrible, man. We would never want to see nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like, but I guess that's that. what I'm saying is if you say that it's to hold the government in check, what does that look like? Because our military is... They're, they're, they're in check. Yeah, you know, I think a government as regular people. You know what I mean? That's re still regular people that works the government. They're going to always put their self ahead. You know what I mean? If you have somebody that works in the government and their family's on the line and my family's on the line, what you think the government is going to do? Protect their family first. So why can't I be able to protect my family? So when it comes to what that looks like, it looks like 
the BLM rallies of a few years ago, pushing back against police brutality. Yep. It looks like the civil rights movement. It looks like nonviolent civil disobedience, often arming people in the community in that process because they will be attacked by police. They will be attacked by the government when there is a threat towards them. Those threaten their locuses of power. And you can see that in the overreaction to those events. People do have power. The government is afraid of us when we start actually communicating with one another, working across the aisle, building coalitions, petitioning, lobbying. The problem is that the vast majority of Americans are off duty. They're not paying attention. They're asleep at the wheel. They're not doing the basic jobs they need to do to show up and hold their elected people accountable. But I've seen what happens when you do. It really doesn't take much to scare them because it's so random that it even occurs. So that's what it looks like. Nonviolent civil disobedience. It's yes. Martin Luther King yes. Jr.'s like six principles of change. And it works. And it works. Yep. And by the way, it works across the world. You said nonviolent, right? Yeah. yeah. So nonviolent where do, where civil guns disobedience. Have to do with you that? have the gun if you have to defend yourself against the government. Yeah. It yeah. does I make guess them when the government like has guns. I guess all I'm saying, all I'm saying is when I hear nonviolent protests, I don't think of firearms. Okay, so let's bring in the disagreeers. I think our American point. government makes and choose which citizens have the right to uh, bear arms in a way. For example, like Hannah, where you were saying um, in 2020, I was fortunate enough to be on the ground almost every day organizing, um, empowering youth, uh, especially black and brown youth in Orange County. But what I've seen was during these uprisings, we had white supremacist groups like Proud Boys, Patriot Front, um, and other white supremacist groups in Orange County, by the way, bearing arms, coming to these, you know, peaceful, nonviolent rallies and, 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 and bearing arms, brandishing firearms while police were there and not get arrested, not get checked. But when we, as black and brown folks in 2020, wanted to defend ourselves, maybe bring um, you know, some pepper spray or, or maybe have uh, a taser in a backpack. I've seen many of my friends get arrested 10 years, 20 years, um, get, get, get stopped and frisked. I agree. While it, white it, supremacists it, were it, brandishing weapons in front of 10 to 15 year old black and brown people. So I th that's why I disagreed because I think our American government, they tend to pick and choose which citizens in America uh, get to uh, bear arms. And I think that the Black Panthers is a perfect example right. of that. That's exactly what was going on with the Black Panthers. They had, they armed themselves to be able to stand up to a government that was putting a tax on them, basically, right? We all know what, <laughs> what happens, right? It's, it's in practice, like, yes, the Second Amendment, that's what it's supposed to do, but it depends who has the weapons. I actually kind of, like, disagree with the prompt for a different reason. I feel like... For me personally, I don't like guns, right? And I'm not gonna encourage anyone that I know to get a gun. And I just don't like anything really violent. And you could say that like, oh, I'm living in like a fairy tale world because I don't wanna use violence and stuff like that. And I definitely am, but I mean, the bottom line is I don't like violence and I'm not going to advocate for anyone to perform acts of violence. But you see, I respect those type of people. Th that, that's fine. If you don't like violence and you, don't want, you, and you wanna be great, that's cool, but would you ever wanna protect yourself? Well, I'm fortunate enough to live in an area that's pretty safe. I don't feel scared or the need to protect myself when I am walking alone at night, which is great. I'm really that's fortunate good. for that. That's good. See, it's always um, where you live. It's where you live. Be, you will not always be that fortunate. I mean, they will, they will Let's find Let's go back you. to the prompt we're talking about yeah. citizens having guns to protect themselves from the government. There's so many arguments to want a gun, right? I think the self-protection is probably one of the strongest ones. Uh, I think second is like, hey, I live in Georgia on a farm, like, the odds of me going out and doing this when I have a farm and this and that, like I want to hunt, I think those are reasonable. So I come from a different view of like, guns should just be regulated, they should be restricted in a way, and if there's a reason you need it, I think it's perfectly uh, right, especially in this day and age. But the idea of like, I need this because I'm gonna fight the government, yes, 200 years ago when this was written, uh, or, or longer, the government did look drastically different. The weapons that they had looked drastically different. It was a little bit more of a playing field. I just think that now, I'm sure everyone on the pro-gun side agrees that the government's way too big, and but none of you have picked up arms and went to the Capitol building and tried to actually shoot or do anything. And going to the Capitol building on January 6th didn't do anything, even with many of them. So in that sense, like people uh, very drastically misunderstand what it takes for people to actually pick up arms. I studied this for a long time. But you're taking it the and wrong it, way, bro. Like, if they, let's say they try to come get guns right now. You think all the people who guns are going to fight back? It's that's just That's when it's going to fight against the government. That's what they said in Australia. And that's, and they, that's and they Australia. Had, that's not America. But. I think it's a rarity that you could see people rise up and effectively do this. 
because of the, how big the government is, because of its techniques and tools, it would require actively training and organizing for some time. But if not that, then what is the solution for when things really hit the fan? What is the answer for people? I think it's just fear mongering. It's a slippery slope of like we're going to go, we're going to be North Korea yeah, if we don't can. have guns. You can end up so there. In, so what do those people do? So I think there's a drastic difference between America and North Korea. If you're creating again a whole different scenario, there is context. It would be a completely different answer. But I'm just asking in any country. If not, like Gandhi, if right? Not he, Second Gan Amendment. Gandhi, for example, he picked up like AR-15s and guns, and he shot. Right? That's how he what freed did India. He, how did he free India? Not through violence, through non-violence. So what you said, it's getting, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's basically a lot and of it is just he organizing. Organizing, yeah. But, the, but what I'm saying is, in but who these did he overthrow? I'm saying getting freedom. Just can answer the question. No, <laughs> I'm saying you're getting. We no, all say, need to know who did he overthrow. No, I'm saying the government. I'm saying people who are in power over them. What government system did he overthrow? Even if it's England, even if it's anyone. But like, I'm he had a great movement. He didn't overthrow a government. But he, did he change anything? He, changed. he definitely changed people's opinion. That's not what I'm asking. I'm government. asking, but, how do you overthrow but, a tyrannical okay, government without over, a second the amendment? Point. But there's this, like, distinction between overthrow and change. In Egypt, yeah. you, you could call it overthrow, you can call it change. They got the they president They had a military out. coup. <laughs> In, in, well, in Egypt? Yes. Or in Tunisia? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I want to pick it back on. I want to pick it back on. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to let you ask. I just want to say uh, in South Africa, they overthrew the government through nonviolent means. Uh, Nelson Mandela preached nonviolence, and he actually was in prison for 20 years and still on the terrorist watch list because he, even when Obama was in office, he was on a, a terrorist watch list mm -hmm. for overthrowing the government of South Africa for apartheid. There were no guns involved in that. And there was no type of faction groups involved. I mean, there were no some weapons. faction groups, but Nelson Mandela didn't promote that. Okay, but plenty of people had guns had in weapons. order to do that. They had weapons. I don't know of any example throughout history where you have seen a tyrannical government actively overthrown without, without the guns. use of guns by some parties and that, and nonviolent yeah. okay, people sir, advocates I mean, Haiti, you see Haiti. I hear, I hear your right. point. The NRA is a respectable organization. Will the agreeers please step forward? Whoa. Oh, oh, wow! Yeah! <laughs> Middle ground! Yes! <laughs> Lady, look at, ladies and gentlemen, look at this score. It is tied, too. They are all making some good points. And look, nobody stepped forward for this particular topic. <laughs> so they all agree on something for once. Ain't that something? <laughs> uh, they all agree that's interesting let's go i didn't see this on my bingo card all right whoever uh disagrees i don't know i guess we could all just come talk that's about it that's pretty funny now. actually i love a good nra bashing session let's go yeah i guess the the pro gun <laughs> people i want to hear from that's first hilarious. I'll just go ahead and say I didn't step either way because I don't feel like I have any authority on that topic. I don't know enough about what they do or don't do. So I just was gonna stay back. Well, I'm the biggest YouTuber, African-American in the world for guns. Mm. And the NRA never called me to do anything with mm. guns. Interesting. They never called me and asked me a question. Wow. You see what I'm saying? I never did no kind of work with them. They never said, hey, hi, Black Ramble, we appreciate what you do. And I just don't respect them. I was like, well, why wouldn't you say, Something with me, would you do something? Yeah, I can, I can help you talk to the community. I can go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. I can go to all these hoods and walk dead in the middle mm -hmm. and shake hands and nothing go down. And I could talk to people, but the NRA never, it never came to me. I would like to say, screw the NRA. Mm. They are atrocious and they've always been atrocious. They are not a gun rights organization. They are a Republican shill organization. Mm. They do not care about the gun rights of people of color. Not once, no. not I never. I just wonder why they never called no. me. In fact, they've actively advocated for gun yeah, control exactly. in the past that explicitly was put in place to block white people. Yeah. And to this date, they continue to be some of the worst people on the ground lobbying when it mm -hmm. comes to the Second Amendment. Yeah. They are constantly looking to restrict it. On top of that, they are super corrupt. The way they use their funds, I don't understand how anybody is still giving them money. Like it is just going to their private planes and their makeup budgets. They do not actually stand for individual rights. No. They will always pick the police over you. I hate them. There are so many better gun groups out there. I just, I'm a little hot under the collar about this one, but <laughs> screw the NRA. I mean, yeah, I mean, even after Uvalde the shooting, um, the NRA almost spun about $15 million bringing up ads on how that, you know, guns should have been in the hands of teachers to prevent these shootings. Um, they have given so much money to even Democrats and Republicans alike. So it's not 
I would just want to say it's not just only Republicans. The NRA has the ear of Democrats in America as well. So that tells you how big of an organization the NRA could be and how dangerous it is. And how much they fuel political corruption. Yes. Like that to me, I mean, I can't say it any better than what you've already said. Mm -hmm. Honestly, too, one time back when they still had like the NRA TV, it's gone now because of all their lawsuits and, wow. and fighting. But NRA TV um, interviewed me to be a host back in 2016. And I was like going through their whole processes with them. And then they're like, okay, great, we want you to go on and test, and you have to go talk about why it's so important to support Trump. And I was like, I'm not supporting Trump, and he's not even very pro-Second Amendment. By the way, Trump passed more gun control than Obama. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I didn't get the job. And that was when I knew. I was like, this isn't about guns at all. This is a Republican shill organization. What's your political identification? Homeless. <laughs> yeah, I don't do politics myself either. I'm politically homeless. I think both parties suck. They're atrocious. I think the two-party mm -hmm. system is like one of the I'll worst things in the country and nothing mm -hmm. gets better till it's broken. I want to do something we've never done before. This was kind of an unexpected discussion. There were a lot of different points of view. Didn't think there would be no NRA supporters. <laughs> <laughs> that one doesn't count, but what are five things y'all agreed on. I think we all agree that there are a lot of black folks like Black Panthers and resistance groups who had, you know, bared arms and were, uh, you know, uh, those rights were taken away from them. I'd sure. say, yeah, I, I think, think everyone's in agreement around like community-based responses to violence, trying to handle yeah. things without government or more policing. Mm -hmm. I think what Hannah said is exactly right, which is, when you attack gun violence or taking away guns, whatever, even if they all agreed, let's take away guns, you have to do it in a very strategic mm -hmm. way because otherwise you are now targeting a yeah. specific group and you're and it, it. So I think whichever way we even go, we all know that it will, again, uh, attack one community over another. Mm -hmm. And whichever route we go forward, we have to address the differences between how we treat uh, inner city areas or mm -hmm. impoverished areas versus other areas. So three would be like, gun violence is bad. Can we all agree on that? Killing people all with violence guns is bad. Really I would yeah. just say all violence. Well, violence is awful. Well, and I also agree. agree on like just that one statement, right, which is not everyone with a mental health issue goes and shoots people, right. but everyone who would go and shoot people in mass clearly yeah, has a mental, mental health issue. What I would say is don't stigmatize mental illness in this process because so much of this conversation does mm -hmm. end up stigmatizing people with mental illness, does make them less likely to seek help and resources for fear of stigmatization, and so mental health might be a component of addressing gun violence, but we can't like hang our hat on it. Uh, number five, I think we would all agree is that whether it's the government or the news or capitalism, whatever, however you want to face it, the media and the government naturally fear monger in many different ways or glorify things, right? Like yeah. it's in uh, the news's nature to replay these things over and over again to make money for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. And that is then perpetuating people going, oh, if I want attention, if I want to be known, I can go do these things mm -hmm. and they will talk about me for years. Yeah, I agree because I mean, it was, it was so many times they posted the face of Kyle Rittenhouse. It was so many times they posted the face of the individual who, who shot the people in that uh, Buffalo. But you think but, that makes well, other people do it? You, but, you, but, you think that makes I, yeah, I think that makes more... A, a, a well, there's a reason why we see it a little bit different. Like in Canada, right. I have a lot of friends from all over different countries, and they're like, you do your news. Like they have just as much crime, crime around they the world. It, yeah, it, the, the news right. tends to go like, oh, there's a they bear that entered it. our town. And that's what we're saying. Here it's like it. shooting, shooting, the this, media, this, this. The the media and they don't the show the victims, but they show the shooter. Yes. Yes. Why don't you... Why don't just for money, right? Why don't like, you yeah. show the victims? It comes from but private also, investors. Also for the cops. Like, they run cover for the cops and the FBI and right. the actual statistics all the time. I think we can agree that... We just got them talking about that, people. When they were talking about do other countries envy the United States Second Amendment rights. But what I was saying was that they don't they wouldn't glorify it like we do. We'll catch these we'll catch these guys and take them alive. They won't kill them on television. They'll take them, put them in the back of a car, talk nice to them and give them McDonald's when they get down to the station. And all you're doing at that point is you're you're being an enabler. You're being an enabler showing them how nice it can be. If they do things like this, when it should be just the contrary. There's government failings that lead to all of us disagreeing mm -hmm. or there being an issue in general. Well, it's media not, manipulation. Why would you I agree want with that. to know what's going which, which on? Will, These are all too fuzzy for it me. Let me <laughs> one, one that I heard that maybe could be our, our fifth one. I didn't hear anybody say that they really foresaw a future of like U.S. citizens fighting 
the military. No. Wait, I'm the fifth though. Yeah. The NRA is trash. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that didn't count. What was <laughs> the NRA is trash? <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. Good job. Thank you. Oh, I'm a hugger. Great job. Good 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 job. Um, what great topics, what great information that came from both sides. You know, at the very end, we have to give ours. That was great content and it was good um, insight on certain things that I didn't know about. And I'm pretty sure for you guys, it was the same. But to give our standpoint on this, what I got from this was, I want to congratulate, first of all, Pro Gun for winning this, winning this contest, 58 to 52. Okay. I want to say from our standpoint, okay, I'm anti-gun in certain situations. I believe every individual is different. I believe every situation is different. And I believe that they all need to be judged differently. What goes on in my household doesn't go on in your household. What goes on in my neighborhood doesn't go on in your neighborhood. What happens in my world doesn't go on in your world. So we all living different lives. When we go outside of our homes, we run into different types of situations. We run into different types of scenarios that could possibly get us uh, or put us into compromising situations. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, everybody that we run into, okay, they have their own separate issues. OK, if I go outside, I don't want to run into somebody that has a gun under a trench coat because I don't know what's going on in their house. But I do believe that I should be able to defend myself in that situation if the police are not there, because before any laws, I didn't hear anybody say this before any laws come into play. I'm a human being and I have the right to preserve my life. No law. No law written, produced, or directed can tell me that I don't have the right to preserve my life. I'm not out to hurt anybody. I don't want to see anybody hurt. I would use all type of preventative measures, but I should have every human right to preserve my life at all costs from any individual that's outside of my home. That doesn't mean that I want to walk around with a gun on my hip. It doesn't mean that I want to walk around with a gun on my back. But what it does mean is that I want to be able to have the right, if, if need be, if need be, to be able to protect myself from anybody. Or anything. And. As again. I think that everybody. Should be checked individually. And we do need gun control. We do need more gun control laws. I didn't say disarming people. I said gun control laws. From. The issues that we're having. Mass shootings. Um. And anything that has to do with you harming somebody illegally. That's where we should, our focus should be. Not on the person that's willing, that just wants to preserve their life from a criminal. I don't think that you should be using guns to bully people. Okay? I don't think that we all need to be walking around here just, ha you know, brandishing guns. I don't think we need to be doing that. I think we all need to mind their business. Even if I was to get into a scuffle with somebody, I don't feel as though that I need to pull out a weapon in order to protect myself. Not unless I'm being shot at. And these issues are not just with the citizens, it's with the police also, because they're shooting people also. It doesn't always have to be lethal force. Some people that are you're getting into these confrontations where you can pluck them in the head and they might fall down. 
So once again, I want to congratulate um, the pro gun team. You're victorious today. Okay. Um, it is a right. It is a second amendment, right? If you so choose B, I would just like to have it there just because it is there. Just because it is there. I have the right to do it. If I want to do it, I don't want anybody taking that away from me. And it's not always somebody's going to be there for you in these times that they're talking about. I do agree with that. There are things that could come up and times that could come up where the police can't get there in time where you may have to defend yourself and you have that right. But Black Rambo, I don't need 300 guns to do that. I don't need 300 guns to do that. I just need one. As a matter of fact, one bullet may do it. So, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I want to see you leave some comments down below and uh, let me know how you feel about this. This was fun. Once again, congratulations to the Pro Gun team. We'll see you on the next reaction, ladies and gentlemen. This has been fun. Have a good night, and I'll see you on the next episode.